Greetings, fellow investigators, and welcome back to our video podcast, Into the Darkness, where my friends and I play the Call of Cthulhu role-playing game. I'm your host, Tom Rayleigh. The scenario is Missed Dues. It was written by Mike Mason and Scott Dorward and is available on the Chaosium website. Our GM for this game is Zane Fleming, and this is episode three. The recap will be given by Josh Harwood as his character, Lucky Coonan. So without any further delays, let's continue our journey into the darkness. Josh? What the fuck have I gotten myself into? What actually went through my head when I walked in to the Temple of Hope to try and talk to this Jacob Smith? What the fuck? However, come to think of it, how did I get here? And I was like, all oh, started, went to see Spider. He told me about Fat Larry, you know, as you do. Me, Mr. O'Leary, and Connor went to go see Fat Larry. Connor snuck off to do some weird stuff. Who knows? He filled us in later, but... Um, Fat Larry then went on to almost very quietly tell us about this Jacob Smith a bit more. He filled us in on this Temple of Hope. And he almost seemed disturbed when he spoke about it. And he even referred to it as almost a cult. Yeah, yeah. I, was, I was just like, yeah, it's probably nothing. And then Connor came back and this figure he found was Thaddeus Black. And another weird detective, Clifton Hawk, whoever that guy is. And... From Fat Larry, uh, we went back and to Abigail, and um, yeah, we, we had food, and uh, we found out about that the other guys got arrested. What, what were they doing? They had a simple job. All we had to do was go to the library, read some papers. They got arrested. So they came back. We, um, we confront, well, we didn't confront them. Uh, Mr. O'Leary had the idea of um, teasing them a little bit. So uh, that's what happened. And then because of their misconduct, we got a little present, which had a hand in it, which sadly for Connor contained, it was his brother's hand. It didn't help that I threw off all over it. It really didn't help. For pretty much the rest of well, what I saw of Connor, he just sat at the bar. Um, so what the other two, Anthony and Liam, filled us in on is something about a stolen dagger, some documents, a museum. Uh, Mr. O'Leary was like, oh, we're not going to do anything illegal. We'll leave it till the morning. So I followed him out because I thought he might, he might change his mind. No, he didn't. As far as I'm aware, he just told us, he just said to us, just tell the others to go home and get some rest. And what did I do? I did not listen because I never listen. And so I went back to the others, tapped them on the back. And uh, yeah, we went out and yeah, basically we scattered out this temple of hope. And I stupidly tried to convince Liam to follow me and he did not. So Liam and Anthony went off to wherever they went off. And I don't know what happened to Mr. O'Leary. I assume he went home and Connor, I'm assuming he's probably still at the bar. I, however, snuck into the Temple of Hope as a sick man. And now I am in a room with a big guy called Max. I am very scared. Help me. All right. Okay. Cool. Cool. Um... So let's uh, let's jump in. I'm going to start with uh, Connor. Um, so you you come to the 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 sun is coming through your now broken window, and, and it uh, the light shines across your eyes, and, and you sort of come to you've you've got a pretty bad headache from uh, from from a combination of things, obviously the alcohol, but also kind of what you experienced last night, which up until waking up you, you've thought it was pretty much a dream but as you come to you realize that as i said the uh the window is completely smashed there's glass everywhere and on your 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 clothes on your chest 
they're a bit ripped and stuff and there's a few small scratches no, nothing too damaging around your neck where the 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 um your pendant was ripped from your from your neck so there's a couple of scratches and and stuff from that um so yeah what what, what would you like to do well, Jesus, Mary and Joseph, I'm coming through this. Oh, fuck. Was I that drunk? Well, it must have been good lovemaking last night, I think. Oh, Jesus, Mary and Joseph. And fucking hell, Michael, did you have to take a shit in my mouth as well? Ah, <laughs> oh, Jesus. And I, so I look at the mirror, oh, the window, and it's like, oh, Jesus. Landlady's going to be right pissed about this. I'm going to peel off a five spot mm -hmm. and leave it there for him as an apology and a fix. Sure. However, I'm sitting on my bed and it's like, fuck, bastards. They stole my fucking pendant. What's that you say, Michael? They're fucked. I know they're fucked. But I'm going to be doing some fucking myself later on. I'm going to get up. I'm going to dunk my head in a bowl of cold water and I've kind of freshen up, get cleaned mm -hmm. up. And I am going to get cleaned up and I'm going to put on some new clean clothes, get myself set up, get the fedora hat going on. But I'm going to be doing a little bit more than that because I'm doing a long, slow shave. Mm -hmm. All the time I'm talking to my brother, Michael, about what's been going on and all the rest of this stuff. And then I'm going to be put, checking my gun, making sure it's all good. One in the chamber full magazine in it in the holster mm -hmm. on the other side i'm going to put two more magazines and because i'm getting a little bit on the prod here michael do you think it's a good idea ah you're right you're right i should be prepared for everything so i'm going to stick two more magazines one in each pocket so it doesn't cut the, the way i look and uh pick up my knife stick that into the thing on my on my calf on the inside of my thing and then lastly i'm going to push over the arm wire just a couple of inches to loosen up a board and i'm going to pull out a 38 special revolver which i'm going to be putting in their mexican carry as i say inside the front of the pants there and make them thunder pants so it is michael okay give me a luck roll <laughs> <laughs> yeah i figured as much <laughs> did he put the safety on <laughs> Oh, it's in condition too. And by the way, it's a revolver, so the hammer's down. <laughs> Talking of a <the> hammer. <laughs> uh, luck roll. Well, I'm good. I got 63 yeah. out of seven, uh, 63 out of 65. Yep, sweet. Yeah, no no, no uh, accidental damage has occurred during this process. And what um, and I'm actually quite, I seem to be quite chipper because I'm whistling a little bit and I've got a smile and a twinkle and I'm off to breakfast. Cool. No problem. Now, I'm just, I forgot to mention this at the beginning. Um, I'm just going to make a, 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 a um, Shamrocks opens at about midday and I'm just going to assume you guys all kind of sort of said to each other, we'll meet back up at Shamrocks at midday. So there's a little ah. bit of time. So I you, thought, you we, go I, th I thought we were heading to Julie's for breakfast. Yeah. Julie's? Okay, sweet. Yeah. So yeah, you, you were going to Julie. So you're, is that where you're heading now? Yes. Okay, sweet. So um, you don't have a car, so you'll probably be walking or hailing a cab, which is, that's easy enough. No, no issue there. Um, so let's jump over to Nevin. Mm -hmm. um, so Nevin, you wake up, um, you kind of roll out of bed. Uh, you're still wearing your your kind of night clothes that you wore, did your burgling and, and stuff like that. And um, as you're kind of rubbing the sleep out of your eyes and, and, and you kind of go to go for a cigarette in your pocket and uh, you pull your hand out and that's when you realize that you have put the piece of paper and, and the photo, um, and the photo. From, yeah. from the previous night. Um, you've, you'd put them in your pocket without thinking about it. Yeah. Um, I got them. Yeah. So, so you, very similar way I'm going to, you know, bathe and uh, shave and uh, comb my hair and slick it back with some, uh, you know, brillantine and uh, put on my nice uh, working suit uh, yep. and uh, get dressed, put on my wingtips and 
uh, once I'm ready, I'll head over to the restaurant, uh, Julie's. Cool. During that process, when you were, were getting ready, um, you heard uh, some footsteps outside your door and then a note was slid under the door. Um, like just, just an envelope with your name on it. Nevin, Nevin O'Leary. Um, and then you heard the, the steps walking away. All right. I'm going to walk over towards the wall next to the door and I'm going to scratch down and I'm going to reach out and grab the, the envelope uh, so that if somebody shoots a Tommy gun through the door, I'm not going to get hit. <laughs> right. So I take the envelope and I'm like, okay. Do I recognize the handwriting? Uh, give me a... Um, on it. I don't know. Yeah. Give me a... Give me an, app uh, an appraise. Okay. Yeah. I got not bad at that. 56. What's my appraise? Uh, no. So I don't no. recognize it, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and open it. Cool. Um, I'm just sending you in private message now, so it's something just, just for you. Okay. Once you read it, um, you do know that this this is from the person who says it, it's from. You know, you know that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. From the cadence and the way that it's written. Did you? Sorry, I sent that to the wrong person. Yeah, ignore that. Whoever got that message, that's not your message. It's my message. I'll poke your eyes out if I find that you've been reading my messages. There we go. Jeez, I hope that they didn't read that message. <laughs> uh, all right, I read it. Oh. So I, uh, I get everything that I want to get. Uh, I, I uh, got my brass knuckles and my switchblade. Uh -huh. And uh, I... Uh, I head on over to uh, Julie's. Cool. And since I don't have two other people to talk to, let's jump over to uh, our very special young man, um, who's actually the oldest of the group, Lucky. So you kind of uh, come to, and at first you're not sure where you are, because, you know, and then you sort of realize very quickly that you are in... Um, you're in the, the temple of hope and you're in the room that, that you, you, you were put in there and you look around you, Max is gone. Um, there's some clothes at the end of your bed kind of folded up nicely, just some white clothes, very similar to what um, Max was wearing and, and the gentleman who, who brought you in. Um, um, yeah, that's, there's, there's nothing else really around you. Yeah. Um, is there any way I can like wash myself? There yeah. There's like a, there's um, like a basin. Uh, a thing with some cold water and, and stuff like that. Yeah, I'll, I'll wash myself and then I'll get out of the clothes I'm wearing and into these white garbs. Okay, so just so you know, the, the, the clothes that you're wearing, once you put them on, you realize there's no way like uh, to really conceal your weapon because it's just a plain white shirt that's like, um, you know, like cheap white shirts are like see-through? Yeah. Yeah, so it's very much sort of like that. You wouldn't be able to wear a gun holster underneath, uh, white pants. So, it, yeah, it, you'd have to, as you're putting it on, you sort of realize that you either have to wear this clothes or wear your own clothes and have your stuff on you. Otherwise, you're going to have to hide your your kit. Because um, you, you do have stuff, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I do have stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm going to... I'm going to keep the white clothes on and then just like hide my other things wrapped in my clothes and just take my other clothes with me. Clothes with you. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm happy with that. So let's, uh, so what do you, what do you, do you leave the room? Um, yeah, I'll, do yeah, I'll leave the room. I'm going to, I'm going to slowly leave the room so I can kind of just peek around the corner a little bit. Yep. Yeah, sure. So as you, uh, 
as you open the door, um, you, you're at the end of a hallway. Um, you can hear off in the distance some 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 talking and laughing going on. Um, nothing kind of too suspicious. You're not close enough to hear actual words, but you, you're aware of of movement and, and and people going about you and stuff like that. Yeah. I'm, I'm and at, so at the end of the hall, there's two doors, and then the hallway keeps going. Okay. I'm just going to walk towards where the noise is coming from. Cool. Um, so you keep heading down the hallway, yeah. um, and you get to the, the head of the stairs to go down. You're on the, um, I think I put you on the, the, cause there's three floor. It's a three floor building. So I yeah. think I put you on, you're on the second floor. Okay. Yeah. So you're on the second floor. So you can hear all, all the, all the noise and stuff going on downstairs, but you yeah. can't hear anything from upstairs. Okay. Yeah, I'm just going to go downstairs. Okay. Um, so when you, you come downstairs, you, you're greeted by um, probably six or seven uh, men and women, um, varying ages. They're all wearing the same kind of similar white clothing. Obviously, the women are wearing uh, white uh, dresses uh, yeah. instead of, of pants. Um, and, and they're all, all chatting and, and, and smiling. And um, uh, you, you see Max over in the, in the corner talking to one of the uh, the gentleman from the front door who who turns and sees you and smiles and and waves and oh, stranger, come meet everyone. Yeah, I I I walk up to him. I'm like, thank thank you for your hospitality. Yeah, our pleasure. Here, let me take your things. And he goes to grab your your uh, your bundle of clothing. Uh, I just go. I'd rather keep these on me if that's okay. Oh. We'll, we'll, we'll wash them up for you, Steve. Please. We insist. Yeah, I reluctantly give them to him. Okay. So he, he kind of goes on his... Uh, Max, would you introduce uh, our new friend to everyone? Yeah, all right. Goes, everyone. And they will quiet down and, and look towards you. And he goes, well, go on. Introduce yourself. Hello. I am... Um... Um, Jeff Buckley. Everyone goes, hi, Jeff. And I was recently diagnosed with an illness and I needed some help. I was homeless. And uh, one of the women goes, oh, Mr. Smith will be able to help you. Oh, I'd be delighted to meet him. Yeah, he gives hope to people who... Who, who have lost it? Th thank you. Thank uh, you all at, for your kindness. It's at this point that uh, the, the guy from the front door kind of uh, comes back around the corner. And before he comes around, you see him, him go up, to, uh, go up to, to the front door, which um, uh, at this point has been, um, has been locked and closed up. And he, he opens the door and opens it up and a, and a bunch of other people come in about another I'd say 12, 12 people all dressed in white all walk in. And then there's a, a few people um, kind of wandering that um, aren't wearing white and seem a little bit more kind of unsure about everything and, and things and look like they might be new members of the church that are kind of coming to check it out. Um, before you can really do anything, um, one of the, the, the new people kind of comes and goes, here, come on, follow me. You can have a seat next to me. And he takes you into a, into a wide room where there's chairs, all, all wrapped up and around um, and, and then like a centerpiece. So you walk through and then there's, there's um, rows and rows of chairs all in a circle and uh, everyone sort of um, takes their seats and, and, and things like that. And then um, the gentleman from the front door who you've now learned is his name is David. Um, and, and David uh, comes around with a collection tray and he starts kind of going up to each of them and everyone pulls their wallet out and, and seems to be putting quite a bit of money into this collection tray. Like not, not coins or anything. It's, it's all notes. Um, and so it, it's going around the, the train, then it finally, and it gets to you. Uh, I'm like, Pat, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't have anything. Um, and, and then, uh, the person next to you goes, it's okay. I, I'll cover, I'll cover, uh, Jeff. And he puts some, some more money down, uh, on, on the tray, um, for you. And then it goes around and then, there's a single seat left 
and and uh, David puts the tray underneath the seat, um, and then he goes um, to to the front door and, and the door where it came in and, and just stands by it. And people just keep talking for a while, a little while, and and then things start to quieten down. And you all realize that a man has entered the room and he's quite tall. He's very well built. He's got very handsome features, um, and he's got like a like nice mustache and goatee. He's wearing completely white white suit um, with a nice big black bow tie and a, and a white kind of Stetson looking hat. Um, and everyone goes very, very quiet and, and sort of looks up at him with anticipation. Um, and he, he, uh, as he comes in the room, he, he shakes people's hands and, and uh, it, it's, it's, it, people are starting to get very excited and, and quite happy. And some of the, the new people who, who have uh, entered and sat down, they almost sort of seem, even though they were unsure, they, they seem to be much relaxed and they're like, Oh wow. You know, people seem to really, you know, love this guy and stuff like that. Give me a sanity check. Thank you. I failed. Okay. Um, take one point. Okay. You even find yourself kind of being quite, quite drawn to his presence and quite, taken with him um and, and uh you, you kind of don't know how to uh how to describe what it is but you you want to hear what he has to say and you're really quite you, you kind of forget about why you're there and what was all going on you you're just focused on what, what uh he has to say and uh all of a sudden he, he quietens everyone down and send the room and he goes brothers sisters you all need hope to survive without it you're nothing but automations, soulless bodies that have no meaning. Reach into your hearts and seek the hope within, for soon darkness will descend and burn mankind off the face of this planet. If you're not prepared, then you shall burn too. I bring you hope, brothers and sisters. Through me, I can heal your heart and help you see the universe beyond. For beyond us here, is the center of all things, a burning, purifying flame at the heart of the cosmos. If we hold true and let that purifying flame embrace and fill us, we will be saved for the rest of mankind is turned to ashes. Call with me, brothers and sisters. Call with me the words of hope, the words of power. And he pulls out a little black book as do a lot of the, as I mentioned, David and Max were reading um, all the other people in the white, they, they bring out these little black books and, and uh, the gentleman next to you hands you, you one as well. And everyone gets handed one. And he turns to, to, a, um, to the opening of the, the first page and he instructs everyone else to do. And um, everyone starts to chant. Um, yeah. Yeah. Lord of Hope, Fatangla, Azathoth, La. And they just start repeating this over and over again. Give me a, another sanity check. I failed. Okay, you give me a 1d4. You find yourself... Oh. Um, okay, you find... You, you are chanting along. You can't help yourself. You, you just want to... To, to chant along with, with what's being said. You, you don't really understand fully what's going on, but you, you just know that this is the right thing. This is, this is, you're in the right place. Um, so just to confirm, you're on 36 sanity right now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You're getting close to... Yep. Almost. <laughs> um, cool. So um, I'm going to leave you, you there at this point um so you're in prayer meeting <laughs> uh and let's jump over to to julie's diner um nevin you you live closest to to the diner yeah um so so you get there first um the first thing you notice when you arrive that that seems quite strange is fat larry's not there hmm. um you had a long night Maybe he's asleep. Maybe. So you, you go over to, to one of the booths and, and sit down and, and Jules comes over to you and she, 
How you doing, Nevin? What can I get for you? Uh, the usual, bacon and eggs. And you know how I like my bacon, uh, incinerate the bacon. I like it so crispy that it's almost black. And the eggs sunny side up? Uh, over easy. I like over to easy. dip my bread in the, in the gooey yellow pots. And uh, you want, uh, you want uh, sourdough for the bread? Yeah, that'll work. Okay, no problem. She goes off and she um, shouts the order through the thing as, as they do. And coffee, uh, yeah. Yeah, coffee on the way, doll. Um, and as, as this is all going on, um, Connor, Connor um, comes, in, comes in through the door and he's looking especially spiffy and, and, and shiny and looking, you know. Have a seat. It's half of the morning to you, Nevin. Coffee over here, yeah. Um, so uh, you seemed uh, pretty depressed last night because of you know, your brother. Uh, well. You know, the thing is, your brother fucked up, so this is what happens when you fuck up. Uh, it's one of those things that does happen. What can we say? What can we do? Well, I'm thinking that we just need to find out what the fuck it is that your cousin wants, give him the information, maybe even give him the fucking money. Where the fuck are those other guys? I've been here, what, 15, 20 minutes now? They're supposed to be here. I don't trust that uh, that Spaniard fellow, and uh, Liam's kind of, you know, a loose cannon. Sometimes he uh, gets himself and... Uh, and that other guy, uh, Conan, Lucky Conan, how lucky can he be? Oh, do you think they've done a runner on us? Nah, I don't think so. That's too early to think that. But uh, I'm curious. Like, it's when was the last time you saw any? Well, you're the bar. That was the last time you saw any of us. Hey, you're all going off to, I guess, to bed or whatever it may have been. I don't know. I had a few things on my mind. Jesus Christ, if those fuckers are in jail again, I swear to God. I don't know. I just don't know. You know but I'll tell what? you what, I'm going to have myself a good breakfast. It started yeah. on the day. Um, what the hell are you doing on the show? Um, as uh, as uh, you pretty much say that, Jules comes over and uh, she puts your food down on the table and she goes, can I get anything for your friend? Go ahead. Right. Well, I'll be having the bacon and the eggs. You got any of that uh, southern sausage, the boudin? Oh, yeah, we got that in droves, honey. Right, we'll put some of that on there, make it a good filling. I'm feeling right and chipper, ready to face the day, and I need me my vittles, that's for sure. Good. You got I'm it. Glad. You know, I got to be perfectly honest with you. Look, I'm sorry about your brother. Uh, and uh, quite honestly, I... I <sighs> Uh, not to be critical of my uh, cousin or anything, because that would be like uh, killing myself, but uh, I don't exactly know why he punished you so much with what those fuck-ups did, you know? Uh, I don't know. Look, my brother comes to town, something goes wrong. I don't know any more than you do. Yeah. Yeah, well, he ain't acting right. And there's something, it's, it's all fishy if you ask me. We got a bit of a change of plans to this morning. See, uh, you might have guessed if you if you knew me better that I wasn't going to wait around for you guys to uh, all fuck up at the at the the museum. So I broke in last night. All right, and uh, I managed to get in and get out without leaving a trace. I uh, I saw the 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 dagger it's supposed to be some sort of American Indian thing. Uh, uh, I saw the, you know, the plaque for it and all that. Uh, and I also managed to find your little, uh, professor's place. And, uh, I, uh, snuck in nice and quiet while he was uh, snoring away in the other room. And uh, I found a couple of interesting things. Look here. There's a picture of the dagger. I'm going to throw that down on the thing. Well, that's mighty nice, isn't it? Yeah. Kind of strange looking. All, all octopusy and stuff. I don't know. Why American Indians are drawing octopuses on stuff, but you know, whatever. And then this thing. Now, this, I don't know what the hell this is, but it's certainly got a lot of mumbo jumbo on it. It looks like some sort of, I don't know, maybe from an old book he's translating. Uh, that would make sense. 
but uh, I don't, I can't make hide and a hair of this. Uh, there's a little bit of English on there, but it doesn't make sense. And all this mumble jumbo here at the bottom, who knows what this is? Where the fuck are those guys? I don't know, man. So we don't have, let to me, do have. Let that. me have a look at that piece of paper there, and I'm gonna sort of like. <laughs> well, you know what? I'm thinking, Nevin. Does this actually mean anything? Who gives a fuck about this knife? It, Who gives it means, a fuck about this piece of paper? It means something to this professor. That's right. about it. It means something to him. Now, it also must have meant something to the person who hired Sticky. This this Smith guy. This Smith guy, right. So I'm thinking, let's stop fucking around here. Why don't we just go and have a wee word with Mr. Jacob Smith? Go straight to the sauce. Oh, oh look, your cousin, He all he says he wanted was the money. I don't know how much money there is in this shite, to be honest. We're looking at a knife. We're looking at some pieces of paper. I don't know what money's in that. I don't know what it's worth. Well, the, the money that he wants is the money that uh, his, his cut of what Sticky got paid. Right. So if Sticky was working for Jacob Smith, right, right. then he knows how much he paid Sticky. Right. Now, that gives us the information. So then he can probably tell us where Sticky is. We go and can see this boy. We're not interested in his stuff. We're just interested in how much he paid and where the fuck is Sticky. Well, that's I. Uh, you pretty much came to the same conclusions I did. You know, enjoy your breakfast, and then if those assholes don't show up, then we'll just head on over to this preacher's house and see what's up there. We might have to come up with some sort of a story, you know, to make it sound like we're not uh, gangsters. But uh, I'm, I, you know, I, I'm, th I'm thinking we just need to talk to the man. And let's face it, if we just put it to him straight. Just tell him we're looking for Sticky. He's a friend of ours. We right. haven't seen him for a while. You know? That's all, that's all we got to do. That's true. And, it's the uh, truth. Now, the thing is. Can you, um, can you both of you give me spot hidden? Sure. Oh, two. Oh, well, that's way better than my 30. I can see through the wall, down the street, and okay. into that other building. Right, and I've got a nice hard one, so I'm actually using his eyes to see the same thing. Okay, so th there's a few things um, that you, you guys kind of pick up at this point. Um, I'll start with, with Connor, what you pick up on. You realize that the gentleman, there's, there's three guys, and they're sitting in the booth uh, ahead of you. So you're looking at Tom. And then the booth behind him, there's this three guys. And it's quite strange because you notice that all these three guys are wearing completely white. What the fuck is Tom? <laughs> yeah, sorry. Nevin. But yeah, so you, you, all these guys are wearing completely white, which is, which is quite odd. And they sort of, it was a very... Oh, you froze. A shift when you mentioned... Jacob Smith. They sort of they they kind of shifted a little bit when when you said Jacob Smith. It was very slight, and you almost kind of didn't notice it. But because they're wearing a white, it was kind of inconspicuous. Nevin, mm -hmm. you at this point sort of see that Jules is trying to get your attention very subtly. She's at the end of the thing, and she's she's trying to kind of get your attention and. She's, she's kind of like going like this with her eyes. She's going. Yeah. Give me a second. I got to go use the restroom. Right, yeah. So I get up and I walk over towards the restroom, which conveniently is right near where she's standing. Yeah. Um, so as, as she kind of walks, as you kind of walk past, she slides a, um, a note um, over to you, which you, you, uh, you, you manage to kind of slip in. And as you walk into the, into the bathroom. Um, and as you, you get in there, you, um, the first thing is there's a very, like, it's a bad smell, even for a bathroom. It's not a great smell. Um, and, um, on the note, it says, check the second stall. All right. So I'm going to go over to the second stall. Yeah. And, and uh, I'm going to look down underneath to see if there's feet. There is. Hey, and buddy. a lot of blood. Ah, shit. So I'm going to put on my brass knuckles. Mm -hmm. And uh, my gun that I told you I was carrying with me. Oh, no. I yeah. don't have a gun. 
<laughs> and a switchblade. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, I open the stall. Is it Lucky? I mean, is it uh, is it one of my guys or is it Larry? It's Fat Larry. Oh, um, he is a he is a, a bullet wound in his head, um, and um, stuck to his chest with a switchblade. Um, is uh, with regards Portellos. Uh, um. I'm going to look at, I'm going to lean over towards Larry without getting any blood on me. Yeah. And see if he's got a gun. Give me a, give me a luck roll. 32 and my luck is uh, 44. So I'm lucky. Yeah. Um, he, he has a, a, a snub nose revolver. All right. You know, right where he always keeps it. Yeah, right in his crack. <laughs> People think it's his dick, but it's not his dick. Um, while you're in the bathroom and this is going on, um, about six guys all wearing pretty nice sharp suits and, and stuff all, all come into the diners and take seats at the bar and, and, um, and, and some of the booths and, and stuff like that. Give me, uh, give me a spot hidden, Connor. Well, that would be 12 out of 65. Is that an extreme or whatever they call it? Um, or is it very hard? It is it's a... Less than 13. Spot hidden. Yeah. So you got 16? Or 20, no. you got a 12? I got a 12 yeah. out of 65. Yeah. So you, I mean, like I said, you're, you're a criminal. You're a mobster. You can tell when a bunch of criminals and mobsters walk into a room. <laughs> Um, so these guys walk in and you kind of instantly kind of shift, you kind of lock up a bit like this is not good. And the guys in white have started to, they've kind of gone shit and they all get up. And, um, as they're passing your booth, they give you, they sort of give you a pretty dirty look and then they, they leave. Well, I'm going to be sitting at the table with one hand on the table, leaning back, waiting for Nevin to come back, and my right hand is fiddling under the table in my thunder pants. Okay. Um, I'm drawing it out and pulling the, pulling the hammer back. Okay. Let me just do one thing. I'm just going to... I'm not leaving the bathroom yet, so I'll, I'll tell you what else I'm going to do. Okay, cool. No, I just, I need, that was something for me. Um, so, so yeah, so you've done that. Let's jump over to Nevin. What, what would you like to do? Well, uh, I'm going to go over to the bathroom door and uh, I'm going to crack it just enough to mm-hmm. look out and see what I see. Uh, yep. And I see these other fellows in there. Well, you know, one's got to take care of himself. Uh, I look over. Is there a window in here that I could climb out of? It's yep. going to be little, but I'm 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 thin, so yeah, you're you're quite small. So yeah, there's just one of those kind of classic, sort of small ones. They're a little bit high up, but you can maneuver up on the stand on the sink and sort of shimmy your way through. Yeah, sorry, Connor, uh, but you know you got to survive. I hope you realize what the hell's going on. Uh, so that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to shimmy out the window. Okay. Let me just do a, I'm not going to completely abandon you. So don't worry But uh, I ain't going to risk yep. my life for yours, you know? Cool. No problem. So you find yourself, uh, in a back alleyway, you're kind of behind, uh, the, the diner. Um, give me a spot hidden. 49. What's my spot hidden? Uh, 50. Oh, I got 49 out of 50. Okay. So you, um, you look around and, and, and you can't see any, uh, you kind of, you're in the shadows and you don't see anyone kind of in, in your vicinity. Um, and you see a, a kind of a route where you can get out and, and get onto the, the street kind of behind the diner. 
so you wouldn't be within view of the windows. Okay, well, I'd like to go to the, the edge of the alley and uh, take a quick glance around the corner and see if there's like, you know, a, uh, a limo or something parked out in the front or gangsta cars. Because um, it looked like there were more in there than there were before. So. Yeah, there's um, yeah, there's 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 two suspicious-looking kind of old-school sedan, like limousine-type cars, um, parked on on um, across the street and then around the corner, so they can see through both windows of the of the diner, which is on a corner. Okay. Um. I'm thinking, honest to God, I'm thinking there ain't nothing I can do. So I'm going to head the other way down the alley to get as far away from here as I possibly can and, uh, and get a hold okay. of my uh, cousin as soon as I possibly can, if I can find a phone booth or something. Okay. Um, so as pretty much as you get to the end of the alleyway you hear the sound of a submachine tommy gun shit ah, sorry connor um so let's jump over to to connor so um the role i did was um a listen role for one of our uh one of our goons and he heard you cock your weapon um so give me a since you, give me what it, it would be a dex roll to see who could fire first or like a dodge yeah i was a, i'm a, i'm on a i'm on as it were a trigger edge i'm watching and listening so as soon as anybody that's what i mean yeah you, you'd already caught you'd already caught okay i'm oh, gonna yeah. do um you do a firearm and i'm gonna have him do a dodge okay uh, 16 firearm. Okay, that is a hard. I got 16 out of 50. Connor shot first. Okay, so... Right, he's gonna, none of that hand solo stuff for me, I'll tell um, you. You do... Okay, he takes... Um, a, he takes a hit point of damage, so he kind of... You just, you just skim his arm, so he kind of heard it and spun just quick enough for it to to kind of just skim him. Um, but this has, uh, it's at this point that the window shatters and submachine gun starts going. So, um, yeah, submachine gun, that's Tommy. Actually, I have a Thompson written here. I prepared for this. Um, okay, cool. So give me a, a dodge roll. And I'm going to give it you on a penalty dice because you weren't expecting a uh, a submachine gun to come through the window. <laughs> All right, you were too preoccupied with the six guys at the bar. Well, I'm still I'm still good. I think. Let me just check. Eh, uh, now nah, failed. Oh, he got an O2. Um, okay, so it's a one d ten plus two. Um, okay. Six plus two, so that's a uh, damage of eight. Right, well, I've only got 11, so I've taken well over half damage. Okay, so that's that's a major wound. Mm -hmm. um, once you go down, so one, two, hang on, that's the wrong thing. Okay, so you uh, once you've gone down, and they can very clearly, you've you've gone down and you're, you're, you're kind of, you're bleeding and, and stuff like that. You're still conscious and, and aware of what's going on, but they, they stop firing. They, the, some of the guys in the shop um, who had the forethought to kind of jump down. So you're on three hit points now. Is that correct? Yep. Yeah. So um, they kind of got down out of the way and then one of them kind of, kind of waves his arm to kind of gesture to whoever's out in the car that you're down um, and they kind of come up to you with their guns in the hand and kick the weapons away from you. Um, and they, uh, 
they say, where's Lucky? How the fuck should I know? The last I saw of him was last night. Where's Lucky? He killed our boss, eye for an eye. That's right enough. I don't fucking know. Um, so that, that I'm kind gonna of, do a, it, I'm gonna do a power roll on that. This is street yep. stuff. You don't you you don't you don't grasp. So forty seven out of uh, sixty five. Okay. Sweet. Um. So they kind of like make a face like, oh, this guy's you know fucking you know. So he kind of nods to one of the the larger members of the group, who um, who picks you up, um, much to your kind of pain, obviously, because you've got a couple of couple of slugs in you um it mainly hit your your leg and the lower part of of your side is where it's hit because you kind of dive to get out of the way of it and you went up um so you get carried off into into one of the limousines um and you get you get thrown on the ground on top of uh two other struggling um bodies with gags and and tied up and that's uh our, our uh, little Spanish friend and, um, and Monsieur Liam um, and sitting in the chairs, uh, the, the aforementioned, they, they looked a bit beat up, broken nose, black eyes, but it's the Portello twins. It's uh, Louis and Frank switching blade, the twins. Um, and um, they, they, uh, they don't look happy. Um, and the guy who's kind of dumped you in, he goes, he won't talk. And um, the, the, one of the, tw- uh, Louis goes, Yet, and then they they drive off with you with them. They they've tied you up, and gagged you. Um, someone's actually come in and looked at your 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 wounds and, and kind of strapped you up a bit so you won't bleed out. Um, so hang on, let me. I'll just do a quick. Um, yeah, yeah. So you you get one hit point back. They strap you up enough with some first aid. Um, okay. Sweet. So now we'll jump back over to, to Lucky. Um, uh, so you've, you've had a, been having a, a kind of lovely old time and, and getting to know um, your, your kind of new group. And you find yourself, sometimes you accidentally forget that you're playing a part and you start to tell people about kind of, you know, you, you, you start telling David that, you know, your, 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 par- your um, wife was killed in a fire and, and things like that. And, and you kind of start accidentally... Um, talking about your real self and then kind of going, Oh uh, yeah. And, 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 and backtracking and, and stuff like that. And you kind of give, give me a, give me a, a power roll. You're on mute. 75 on your power. Roll. Cause luckily it wasn't a sanity, but you don't have enough power to kind of remember you. You're trying to, rem- you know, there's something you're meant to be doing, but you just kind of like, you can't remember it, what it is. Um, it's at this point that you, you see uh, Max and um, another member, uh, a guy called um, Greg, who are talking to, to Jacob Smith. And Jacob Smith is sort of having a, a, a conversation with them and, and, and seems to be quite kind of they're talking in hushed tones. And then Jacob looks over and he sees you looking and a smile comes across his face and he, he gestures you over. He goes, Hello, uh, you're Jeff, yes, yeah, sir? Um, yes, pleasure to meet you. A pleasure to meet you, son. Welcome to, uh, welcome to our humble family. Now, I am just sending out Max and Greg here on a little uh, errand for, my, for me. Uh, would you be interested in joining them? They can tell you about the ways of our, uh, of our religion and our group, our family. Um, y- yeah, why not? Yeah, I'll do it. Cool. Sounds good. And then he, uh, you know, give, he hands a little bit of money over to Max. Um, and he goes, uh, try and wrap that up quickly, would you please, Max? Yeah, all right. And, uh, Max uh, and, and Greg kind of walk on out with, with you following after them. Um, and you, you kind of go down the block a bit to, to a car. Um, and just as you, you get to the car, another three members kind of uh, uh, rush up to, to Max and Greg and they go, Hey guys, we just just been down at the diner. Uh, yeah, what? God, gunshots and everything. Some guys walked in and they were talking about Jacob. They were gonna come and 
talk to him and, and, and stuff like that. Give me a power roll. I'll give you, I'll give you a, um, a no, what I, do you call it? You pass? I, I passed. I passed. It almost like coming out into, into the real world is like a rush of like fresh air and, and Julie's diner being mentioned and, and two guys and, and stuff like that. It always kind of comes you to a crashing halt like, oh, shit. And you realize all of a sudden what you're meant to be doing and you don't know, you look at your watch and, and out, like a couple of hours have passed and, and stuff like this and you're like, shit, and these guys are going, and they, they I don't know what happened, but we, we left because as soon as we saw something was going down, we, we left, we got out of there. And um, they're in a real panic and, and, and Max and Greg are kind of going like, oh, this, this thing. And he goes, you quit going back there and don't, don't panic anyone, but you need to tell Father, uh, you know, Smith what was going on and describe what these, these guys to him so he knows. And we, we got some business to take care of. And they go, oh, okay, okay, we'll, we'll, be, we'll be on the alert. And they, they kind of run off back to the church and, and Max and Greg uh, get in the car and they kind of look at you like, well, you coming? Um, I kind of just, I kind of pause for a minute and then just go and then just walk to the car and go get him. Yeah, cool. No problem. So you, you, you're in the back seat. You're in the back seat. Um, and you get in the car. Uh, let's jump over to, to Nevin. All right. Now, now suddenly I've got a southern accent. Thank you. <laughs> So much for that. <laughs> yeah, all right. No, I'm a, a lot of southerners in our for some reason. <laughs> I'm gonna, you know, pull my hat down and I'm gonna get on the phone and uh, call uh, the hammer. Um, so it, it pick up and it's like uh, it, it's a female voice, obviously his secretary. Hello. Hey, uh, Betty. Um, here comes that southern accent. I should never listen to a southern accent. <laughs> um, Betty, uh, I got a situation. This is a uh, Nevin. Can I talk to uh, the hammer? I'll patch it through, and then you kind of wait a few moments, and then this better be good news, Nevin. Well, cousin, we got a situation. Uh, I got your message, and uh, we was uh, over at Julie's diner. And uh, we got waylaid by the uh, Portella brothers uh, and, a, and a bunch of them. They shot the whole place up. I had it with a, a machine gun. I got out uh, through the bathroom window, but uh, I'm pretty sure that they got uh, Connor. I don't know about the other two. They didn't show up either, so he may, they might have them all. Uh, that might take care of at least one problem, you know what I mean? Yeah, what well, you... I don't have any problem about the Portalos cleaning up my uh, my problems. Well, and also, uh, Fat Tony's dead. They uh, they F stuck Fat him Larry? in the bathroom. Fat, Fat Larry. Fat Larry's dead. Oh. They stuck him in the bathroom. I love Fat Larry. Me too. You know, he's a nice guy. But holy shit, dude. I don't know what to do now. Uh, we don't know where any of them are. I think they've all been taken by the Portello brothers. Uh uh, we, you know what, uh, without going into all the detail, I tell them about what we have found out that, mm -hmm. that recovering the items is a useless venture because who cares about a book and a piece of paper and bullshit like that. But, uh, if we can find out, I'm still on a mission to find this sticky fella and, uh, yeah. get, get your money. But, uh, he's, he might've skipped town. Okay. Um, so he goes, um, I may have some information, I, I may have some information for you on that front. Um, obviously I wasn't letting you bozos do all the, do all the hard work. I, I put my, uh, my ear to the, to the, to the, uh, to the floor with that. And, um, I had a couple of, couple of associates of mine look into some things for me. Um, drop by the shamrock. There's some people waiting there for you. I'll head over there. By the way, also I noticed uh, uh, Clover Black's been sniffing around too, and he's got that other bloke. Uh, what the hell, uh, uh, Clifton uh, Clifton Hawk, the private investigator. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm I'm keeping them uh, on the very fringe of what I'm doing, so they don't know what I'm up to. 
Um, and he goes, uh, before you do anything else, give me a call. I'll, I'll look in to see what I can do about this Portello problem, see if I can get you some of them boys back. Yeah. Not too worried about Connor. Well, I'm going to head over to, uh, I'm going to head over to the Shamrock. Uh, oh yeah, there's this preacher. Maybe the I'll pre go by and see. Yeah, there's this preacher named uh, Jacob Smith. Uh, he's the guy that hired Sticky. I thought I might go by there and see if I can find out how much he paid uh, Sticky for the job. You, you go to the Shamrock. I'll I'll uh, I'll get I'll send nails and some of the boys over to to have a look at the uh, where where is the church? It's uh it's on some uh, street. Yeah, yeah, it's on Church yeah. Street. Yeah, it's, so it's you take him to the address. It's on Cult it's Street. Cult Street. <laughs> it's Cult Street. Yeah, no problem. So you you've informed all that, and um, you head off to the uh, Shamrock. Right, Connor Ryan. Um, so you you wake up, um, and you've been patched up. As I said, you know you you you're not bleeding anymore and stuff, but you're not kind of feeling or looking too good and, and you look to to either side of you and, and um and sure enough they they're tied up to the chairs is is uh our Spaniard and, and, and Liam. Um Liam's awake but uh and Anthony um seems seems to still be out. Um you're you see you can't really see much. It's a dark, musty room. You look like you might kind of be in, in an attic or something like that. It's like wood. You can, it's like a peak ceiling uh, and stuff like that. There's no doors or, or anything you can see. Um, so you kind of assuming that the only way in is kind of a couple of windows, but not much light coming through. Um, so yeah, what you're, you're tied, you're like wooden chair, arms tied behind your back and your ankles tied to the legs of the chair. Well, Michael, there's another fine fucking mess I'm in. You can't get nothing straight in this fucking world, can you? I'm probably saying that through a gag. <laughs> uh, no, you're not gagged, surprisingly. Oh. Um, yeah, the three of you guys aren't gagged. As, you're doing, um, as you, you do that, though, Liam sort of goes, well, what are you talking about? Who, who are you talking to, Connor? Oh, it's Michael. Not the archangel, mind you. It's Michael. You, you're... Brother? Oi. It's an old Irish thing. It's got to do with the she, you know. Right. And he's sort of just like, you can see he's looking around trying to kind of, you can tell he's trying to find a way of, of him getting out and, and, and things like that. Um, give me a luck roll. Oh, well, that's rather nice. Whatever it is, it's 07. Sweet. Um, so there's one thing you can say for the Italians is, is they're not as thorough as the Irish. And you can, vary, you can tell that strapped to your leg is still your knife. Um, they, haven't, they haven't done that well a, a pat down. They probably thought because, you know, you, you were shot that, you know, they just wouldn't bother you. You know, you're not going to do anything anyway. But you can definitely still feel your uh, your knife uh, in your in your leg pocket. And I'm guessing I'm not loose enough to be able to actually move my leg and my arm just enough to get it. What What did you do on the roll? We got a seven, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's a that's a pretty good roll. Um, yeah, your 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 wrist is is kind of um, it, it's it you can kind of feel like it, it is moving a little bit, but ever, ever so faintly. Um, do you want to try and kind of... Right, if I can get my knife, but I'm not going to try too hard because I'm bleeding out. <laughs> yeah. Um, give, me a, give me a strength roll. A strength roll. Uh, 35 out of 55. So that's a regular. Oh. Yep, sweet. So you, you kind of feel your, uh, your hand and, and you, you get it to a sort of a certain point um, and and you, you just feel like you you could just do it if you if your thumb just wasn't. See, so you know there's a way to do it, but it's not going to feel great. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Okay. So take one point of damage. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, so you, you get your uh, you get your thing out, and Michael sort of what, and he 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 hears the the pop and kind of turns like what what was that, and then realizes that you've you know you've broken your the the, the bone in your thumb, so you could wiggle your hand out. This is called Cthulhu. Nothing's easy. <laughs> Um, so you're, you're untied. Um, you're, you're a tough Irish bastard. So you, you, you can, you're standing, you're not feeling too good and stuff. You're a bit wobbly, but you're able to stand and kind of get in your feet and you walk over to, to Liam and you, you untie him and, 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 and things like that. And then you're both standing there in front of, uh, Anthony and you kind of just pause for a minute. <laughs> I'm going to leave that up to you. <laughs> Well, what do you say, Michael? I mean, he did fuck up. But, you know, he's not really at fault for what they're doing. What do you think, Michael? I'm going to find out. <laughs> what would that be? Power, intelligence, luck? Um, let's go with a, with a pal, because uh, you're kind of talking to an imaginary person. So <laughs> it's kind of your mind... <laughs> Well, I did get 47 out of uh, 65, so that's a regular pass. I think maybe I'll use him for other things, and I'm going to cut him loose. Okay, so you cut him loose. He's, he's still out. Um, he's, he's, they've knocked him pretty good. Um, so Liam kind of puts him up over his shoulder, um, and, and uh, you guys, they're now standing in this. Well, just, just a minute there, Liam, and I'm going to adjust. Better. See, now he's a better bullet shield. Hey, noted. That's good for me to know. <laughs> <laughs> so, as we go out, I'm certainly going to peek out, try the door, peek out. And there's no I'm, door. There's no door. Trap no, door? You're, you're, yeah, there is a trap. You, you do find a trap door, yeah. There's a few windows. They're a bit grubby, um, but you can definitely tell that you're in an attic. Right. Do any of these go windows go out onto a, a a roof we could walk on? Yes, they do, but it's not going to be like you could walk on it, but it's not going to be easy with you and your condition. Right. Well, that's plan B. So I'm going to actually lay down and listen with my ear to the actual wood of the trapdoor. What am I hearing down below? Uh, you're definitely hearing. Um, give me, give me a listen roll, actually. All right. Listen, 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 listen. All right. Oh, there it is. Oh, that's not too bad. Uh, that's just a regular, though. Okay, it's, no I'll... problem. So you hear, like, again, um, you don't hear, like, definite words or anything, but you definitely hear movement. You hear people, things going on. Um, you hear a couple of, like clicks of like ammunition being locked into to guns and, and, and stuff like that. All right. I think it might be a case of the window, Liam. So we're going to take the one that looks like it goes out onto the easiest piece of roof. Mm-hmm. Pop it open. I will actually slide out first. Okay. Liam's got the body on him. Yeah. And I'm thinking for a second, just before I slide out, is there a bolt or anything on that trapdoor on this side? Give me a luck roll. 33 out of 65. So, Pass. so that's a, that's actually, a, is that just a hard? No, it's on not. A lot. No, yeah. I'm going to, oh. no, 33 out of 65. So just, pass. yeah, there, 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 there is, um, but it's nothing like it. It won't be one that's going to hold back a, a able-bodied person oh. from just like ramming it open. It'd probably take you know two decent hits, and they'd be in quite hot easily. That's got me to thinking. I think actually, Liam, would you lay the nice Spaniard down on top of the door? I'm going to drop the bolt in, and I'm going to drop the Spaniard on top of the door. He sort of gives you a look, looks at Anthony and goes, uh, he's been holding me back anyway, and puts uh, Anthony down on the, on the, on the, the trap door. And he's tied up, definitely. Right. Okay. 
we're up. We're out on the roof. We're, we're off ski. Let's okay, see. Okay, give, uh, give me a dex roll, and I'm going to do one for our lovely. Oh, nice. That's a hard for me. Okay. Uh, sorry, um, I've, you obviously you're hurt. Penalty dice. Oh, well, let me throw so a do, one, do one more. Yeah. Oh, well, that's okay. It's the well, that's not a hard now, but it's a pass. Okay, so you both pass quite easily. Liam probably helps you a little bit. He can tell you're injured, so he kind of helps you probably a little bit. Now that he's not carrying um, Anthony, it's it's okay. Um, and he manages to kind of get you up onto the roof. You you walk along a bit. You, you come to a point where it's the shortest gap between you and the next building to jump across. It's about a two-feet dr- jump. Oh, okay. Uh... Let me just check on that. Okay. Uh, well, if it's only two feet, I could take a pretty good long step. Is it a good flat side on the other side? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, if it's a two foot gap, it's not going to be very much. So yeah, that's no problem. Do you want me to uh, under jump? I, I just passed under cool. decks. I'm good and hard. Yeah. So no, yeah. So it would have been a jump or decks, whatever. So yeah. you get across no sweat. Let me just do one for, yeah, he, he's no problem. He gets across as well. Um, you get across to this building, you walk to the other end of it, and there's a fire escape, um, which you can you can go down pretty easily. Um, you come out onto the street, and um, you realize you're in, the, you're in the campus district. Oh, boy. Right. Where do you think we need to get to, Liam? Obviously, we've got to get away um, from here. Well, he, he, yeah, he's like, obviously, the last time he got, um, he was around here, he was with Anthony, and, and he got picked up, and he knows that there's some um, suspiciousness going on with, uh, you know, he, he's not sure if he got seen by the professor or not. Um, at that point, there is, a, like, a paper boy. He's kind of walking down and yelling stuff, and, but, and he's like, another robbery. Read all about it. Campus district, another robbery. Did they empty me pockets of me money? No, surprisingly enough, you've got your wallet. Toss, so, toss the boy a quarter. No problem. He, uh, he um, gives, you a, gives you a paper and he goes, thanks, mister. And he runs on off. And there on the front page is um, uh, Miskatonic Professor robbed once more, suspect um, in need of questioning. And it's just a drawn photo of Anthony Neguera. I'm actually going to give the newspaper to Liam because I got a, probably a big bloody stain on me. Yeah. Um, take that down to the nice policeman that's probably walking around the campus. Maybe he's got a dog. I don't know. <laughs> and tell him that you've seen this guy in that building we just come out of. So um, you, as you, as you're pretty much saying this, you you hear about you hear some cars. And they, they, you hear them because they're screeching around the corner and two cars kind of screech around the corner. You have I'm, the stepping, to, I'm stepping yeah. back into any kind of cover. Yeah, you, you, duck, duck, you and Liam duck into an alley and you hear these cars come screaming around the corner and then about 12 or 15 guys jump out of these cars and they've all got, they've all got Uzis and... Uh, not Uzis. <laughs> <laughs> um, they've all got like uh, Tommy guns and, and stuff like that. And then uh, one of the guys gets out of the car and he, uh, he has a, a, bottle, a bottle of what looks like some amber liquid. He takes a big swig, rips a piece of clothing off his arm, shoves it in there, lights it on fire and throws it through the window of the building you've just gone into. Um, you recognize some of the guys in the group. This is, this is the Irish mob. The cavalry's coming. <laughs> this is. Ah, do I recognize the guy who did the drinking and the throwing? Um, he's the guy who gave you the arm. Is he? Yeah. Where's he looking and where are the other dozen guys? Um, so you kind of had walked down the street a bit. So I'd say you'd probably be about 50 feet away from these, these group of guys now. Um, and and they've, all, they've all just started rushing. So he's thrown that in. Some guys have kind of stuck their head out the corner and they, they're just kind of blasting them off. Um, they, they're taking out the. They, they're sick of this Italian mob. They're, they're getting rid of them. I'm going to do so. 
Liam, Michael, let's get the fuck out of here. We can deal with this later. Um, you don't have to tell me twice. And Liam kind of runs off with you. Um, cool. So you you you, uh, you kind of head off into the. Um, uh, it's kind of around about. It's getting towards the afternoon at this point. So you've been out for a bit and, and, and so on and so forth. Nevin, lovely Nevin. Sorry about the wait. <laughs> um, you you have arrived at the Shamrock and sitting there behind one of the booths is uh, a very nervous looking fat gentleman who sees you coming down the, the thing and, and kind of looks pretty scared. Um, you know, this guy is greasy spoon and he, he's sitting in one of the booths. There he is. Hey, greasy spoon. And what flanked by you? him is your two best friends, Thaddeus Black and Cl- um, Clifton Hawk. What's going on here? Some sort of a party? Uh, so that, they've kind of flanked him, and, and you can tell very clearly that um, Greasy doesn't want to be here and that the other two have brought him here. Um, so, you know, Thaddeus sort of gets up and he goes, you're right, Nevin. Uh, a little bird told us you were looking, uh, you wanted to have a, a wee word with this one. Yeah, sort of indirectly. All that we're looking for is uh, we want to know where uh, Sticky Jack is. Sticky, I, I, I don't know Sticky Jack. I told you. And with that, Clifton just slaps him across the face with his backhand. I like you, Clifton. You're a great, great guy. I like the way you smack that guy. Look, first of all, there's something I got to know. Why do they call you Greasy Spoon? And... um. He's very sweaty. <laughs> like, he, he's a big guy. Um, he's not as big as Fat Larry, but he's a big guy. He's bully. But he's just glistening, and his clothes are all grubby and, and, and stuff like that. Yellow teeth. Um, yeah. He looks, he looks greasy. Look, there ain't no loyalty amongst guys like us. So you got to tell me where I can find Sticky. Because he owes us some money. And uh, okay. we want to ask him where the money is. At this point, after um, after Clifton hit him, he's going, hey, please don't, don't hurt me anymore. I, I, I didn't do nothing. I don't, I don't want any trouble. I'm telling you now. I, I told you, I don't know, Sticky Jack. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I just want to go home, guys. What do you mean you don't know, Sticky Jack? Of course you know, Sticky Jack. You're like... You're like uh, Two peas in a pod. And he's sort of like, he, he's looking, you can tell he's looking around for, for a way to kind of slip away from, but he's, he's, he's stuck in the booth because on one side is Clifton, the other side is Thaddeus, and then you're in the middle. So there's no way for it, but you can definitely tell he's looking for a kind of a way to, um, to do. Give me, give me an idea roll. All right. I got an idea. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, I don't have an idea. 99 I got. Cool. So go with the idea you had. All right. <laughs> I'm going to just sit down next to him and put my arm around his greasy, uh, greasy shoulders and say, do you know who my brother is? You know who the hammer is? And he kind of freezes and goes, the, the hammer? Yeah. He's my I, cousin. I and he kind of looks at you up and down. And he goes, you, you an O'Leary? Oh, like, yeah. Uh, give me so, an intimidate roll. Oh, cool. I like intimidating people. Intimidate. My intimidate's not very high. That's surprising. I saw I didn't pass. You got 40 out of 20, 25. Jeez, my intimidate should be higher than that. Um, so he kind of goes, um, he goes, I, I never heard of you. You, you don't look like an O'Leary. I reach into my wallet and I pull out my driver's license. O'Leary, you son of a bitch. Now, you can tell me where Sticky is, or you can tell the hammer. Uh, give, me a, give me a persuade. All right. How's my persuade? I fucking rolled exactly the same number. Uh, it's the Your, same. It's the same? Yeah. So, um, cool. So he's he's just like, look, I, okay, I I know I know Sticky Jack, okay, but 
Look, he's, he's my best bud. I, I don't I don't want nothing. He didn't do nothing wrong, okay? He made a mistake. We ain't going to hurt him. We just want the money. We want our cut of the money. Where can you, I find him? You, you promise you ain't going to hurt him? There ain't no reason to hurt the guy. We just want our cut of the money. We understand circumstances. He just forgot. But, w w what about me? You going to hurt me? Why am I going to hurt you? I got no reason to hurt you unless you don't tell me what I want to know. Okay. Jack, last time I talked to Jack, he, he was lying low. He, he was worried about your cousin, the hammer. He lives in the lower south side on Walnut Street. Uh, on Curzon, Curzon Street off Walnut Street. Number 22. Number 22. That's it. Get rid of this clown. No, I'm joking. They're not going to hurt you. Have a drink. Um, it's almost as if uh, Abigail just knew you were going to say that. She brings over a plate of food and, and, and some uh, some hot coffee for um, for Greasy Spoon. who kind of lights up a bit like, oh, th this ain't so bad. Well, I, I look um, down at his food and I'm like, God, that smells good. You know, the hammer's going to be here in a few minutes. I'm supposed to meet him here. And he... <laughs> Uh, 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 thanks for the food. I, 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 I gotta go. I, I got uh, stuff to do. Um, and uh, he he kind of gets out and and runs up off the uh, up the stairs and out and everyone's sort of laughing and having a bit of a. Thing. And, and, and I sit I'm, I sit where he was sitting and I start eating his food. <laughs> um, Thaddeus and and uh, Clifton they showed like, uh, sorry to love you and leave you, Evan, but uh, me and Clifton I got some business to take care of, but um. When we found Greasy, he had these on you, on him. Um, I think they might belong to some friends here. And he throws two wallets to you, and you open up, and the driver's license are Liam and, and Anthony. Um, Holy shit. Fuck, I let him go. I don't know where they are. Um, and almost as you say that, walking down the stairs is Connor Rain, uh, Ryan and, and, uh, and Liam. And um, Connor does not look good. He's... He's got blood holes all over him and, and just, he's looking a bit white and pasty. Um, and, and Liam looks, uh, he's got a black eye, but nothing more than that. Jesus Christ. What the fuck has been up with you guys? You got out of, you got out of the diner. Okay. Huh? Well, not so okay. You're muted. And, and, and you just can't talk. You just, you <laughs> I think, yeah, I think I've got a little bit of the indigestion while I was there. I had to go for a little walk around town. Jeez, we got to get you fixed up. Abigail, you got any, uh, like, uh, towels we can use for patching this guy up? Oi, and not not a problem. She kind of runs off. and she, I, I keep some stuff in the back in case uh, Thaddeus gets beaten up too bad. Well, Look, we got we to see about getting you over to Dr. Betterman. This is going to kill you if this doesn't get fixed. You're going to get sepsis. Oi. I probably will, but I think a little alcohol on the outside and maybe a shot on the inside later. So um, I see you Abigail and Abigail comes back um, and she has a first aid kit and she's actually brought some, uh, she goes, oh, I brought some of me, me, me dad's old clothes down. Here, here uh, take those things off and, and, and put these clean clothes on. So I see you and I see Liam. Where the fuck is, uh, where's the Spaniard and where's, uh, where's Lucky? I don't have a clue where Lucky is. But as for the Spaniard, uh, he, he's keeping an eye on the door. The door here? What? No, the door over there where all your friends are going. I don't get what you're saying to me. I've left him with the... I've left him keeping the quiet... Uh, uh, he's, he's looking after the door, keeping what you might call the Italians at bay. Whatever. All right. right. So you haven't seen you haven't seen Lucky. Where the fuck is Lucky? Liam, where the fuck is Lucky? Where, where you saw him last? I I I, I didn't see. We we and, go, and then he goes. I, oh God! And then and then you guys just see like just the 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 pure like oh shit. You guys we we did a drive by the church last night. And Lucky wanted us to drop him off. I think, oh, God, that idiot. You went by the church. 
All right, you know what? You're going to keep that to yourself because the ham is going to be here in a few minutes. And uh, how the hell did you guys get out? Um, well, you tell me the story. All right. Yeah. <laughs> well, there was this window, you see. <laughs> yeah, you know what? That's what I did. Uh, when I saw those guys out in the front of the, the, the diner, I went out the bathroom window. Sorry, I didn't mean to leave you, but you know. Hey, Actually, that, that reminds me of one thing. I've got a question. Um, uh, give me a – what's Connor's – like, is he left-handed, right-handed? I had him like down as right-handed. right-handed. Right, okay. One sec. Give me high or low? High. Okay, yeah. So you you broke the thumb on your right hand. Um, so I think she's kind of strapped up your hand a little bit on the right. So you kind of, you've got more of a, like a claw thing at the mm. moment, um, which will annoy, be annoying for certain things like shooting a gun. That's uh, all right. I can always pull out me the gun if I've got one, but I haven't. So never mind. Because that's um, the nice thing about this kind of show. Oh, actually, um, your gun's gone. Of course, you. That's right. It's gone. Long gone. Yeah. Sweet. Um, so no problem. So you guys are there. As you guys Connor. are saying this, um, oh sorry, well, continue. Before anything happens, Connor, I need you to go in the bathroom and stay there. Okay. I don't well, want. Actually, I don't. Actually, I don't want. Actually, if I'm getting patched up, uh, maybe I'll go with Abigail in the back somewhere. I need you to stay. I need you to stay out of here when the the ham is here. I don't want him to see you. Oh, but I was wanting to talk to him. But no, that's okay. You don't, you don't want to talk to him. No. Okay. Uh, um, just as a matter of interest, I, I got a under charm. I did get a hard charm on Abigail for suggesting we go in the back to get the patching done. Oh, she doesn't need any charm. To, she doesn't like it when you try and flirt with her. Um, that's how you lose hit points. <laughs> but no, she's more than happy to kind of take you and, and, um, and, and finish patching you up in, in the back room. And she kind of definitely gets the vibe of Nevin that um, you don't want to be out the front here when, when the hammer turns up. Pretty much as you get out the back, um, you hear the door at the top open and, and uh, steps come down and, uh, a couple of guys come in. They look a little bit worse for wear. Some of these guys, they they go over to the bar and. Um, I'm also going to tell Liam. I'm just going to say, say nothing about Connor. I mean, about Connor being in the other room. Okay, and he he kind of nods and keeps his head down. Um, and um, it's got a couple of guys order a few drinks and and uh, nails and and the hammer. See you, and they walk over to the uh, over to your, to your table and goes, Nevin. Did you did you find uh, my little gift that I left for you here from Thaddeus? Spoon, greasy spoon. Oh, yeah. And uh, he told me where this uh, sticky lives, so I can go over there and see if I can get your money. My God, it's been hard tracking this guy down. Oh, well, that's what you can't find a, a snake in high grass that well. But it's all right. And I, uh, I, I, I'm proud of your cousin. I'm proud of your cousin. I found uh, Liam here. Uh, he managed to escape from the Portello Brothers, but apparently uh, the other guys are still stuck there. Um, and then uh, Nail sort of starts like <laughs> laughing at that, and uh, Hammer sort of looks at him and smirks and goes, "Yeah, we we clean that place out. If anyone's in there, they they're long gone." Really? Mm. Well, come say come sa. Uh, I've got some boys uh, heading over to the church now. Um, why don't you? Uh, why don't you and Liam uh, go pay a visit to to Jack and go and get my uh, go get my wares or my money? You got it. By the way, we haven't seen uh, we haven't seen Lucky Coonan either. I think he might have gone over to the church last night, so he may be pushing up the daisies right now too. I don't and know. Then, uh, he looks up at Nails and he goes, if there's one person who can fuck things up, it's Lucky Coonan. Yeah, where he got that name, I don't know. Also, we've been seeing around town all these people dressed up in white. I think they're part of that uh, religious, uh, this Jacob Smith's place. 
old uh, Spider, you know, Spider, he oh, said yeah. that uh, when we mentioned this, uh, this preacher, he almost turned white. He said, this guy's a bad guy. He pretends <laughs> to be a good guy, but he is a bad guy. Of course, that doesn't scare us, but, you know. They don't know the meaning of bad. Just when you see a guy and he ain't got no gun, he's probably got a gun. Oi, our family motto. <laughs> right, know, cousin, I, well, I, you head off to Jack's and uh, let me, me and Nails and the boys uh, d deal with the church. And then he sort of looks around and goes, where's Abigail? Uh, she's in the back. Oh, good. I want to have a word with her. And he starts to head off to towards uh, towards the back. Uh, you know what? Uh, let me go get. Let me go fetch her for you. Uh, give me a. Give me a some... persuade roll. I'm going to do a persuade for Liam as well, just to help you out. I got a 17 that time, so that's a pass. Oh, cool. Um, so he kind of goes. He kind of looks at you and he goes. You know, you're starting to, to, to live up to your family name there, Nevin. Yeah, I'll bring you some coffee too. Yeah. So he goes, uh, he goes off to one of the booths and takes a sit down. Um, and you, I'm assuming, then head off to the back room? Yeah. And uh, I just go up to uh, Abigail and, and Connor and I just sort of, I, I grab a hold of Connor and I, you know, like this. And I uh, shove him in the closet. Okay. And I'm like... Keep your fucking mouth shut. Um, and then um, it's just you and Abigail? Yeah. Uh, and I'm like, uh, uh, Cousin Morty wants to talk to you. The hammer. Yeah. And she goes, she goes, oh. And she kind of walks out and, um, and, and heads off to talk to Mordec uh, Mordecai the hammer. And I'm, I'm following her out. So like, Okay, cool. No problem. So she... She goes off um, to, to the booth where they've sit down. And I grab the coffee and <laughs> Yep. Yep. So you run it over to to um to the hammer and, and things and he goes, Oh thanks, cuz. That that'll be enough. And he kind of gestures you to walk away. Yep. I'm heading out. Good God, I hope Connor stays in the shack in the fucking closet. Cool. So uh <laughs> Liam follows you. Um, I have he, no need to come out of the closet. <laughs> um, cool. So I'm just going to leave that for there and jump back over to to Lucky Coonham. Um, so no. you, uh, you, you, um, all of a sudden you you you're driving along and you realise you come into the lower south side, um, and and you come up uh, to 22 Corzon Street. And um, Max and and Greg are kind of looking out the car and they look at each other and goes can't see anything going on in there which apartment's his and he goes i, I, I don't know it's uh it's what maybe it's written up on a board there and they say uh hey uh hey new guy jeff go 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 check up there and uh tell us what uh what room number a guy called jack fulton is on okay uh, uh by the way they do notice that i've now gone like irish like i'm sounding like yeah going back into my old accent I just get out of the car and then go have a look. Yep. Yeah. Um, Q, one momento. Yep, cool. So you, you, um, you come up to, to the, it's an apartment building. And um, like you said, there's the door with obviously like the, the, the knocker. And then on the side, it has names and, and different, um, numbers so um on the the very top floor is a bunch of names and then there's a name that says jack fulton it's level four okay i'll just go back to the car and tell them it's number four lower level four um cool so um max goes uh okay uh, you wait here with greg um um and he gets out of the car and and walks off uh, off around the building okay uh, i I just go on. So, Greg, what's it like with the religion? And he goes, "Oh, it, it's great. I mean, I, I, I used, I had a wife and kids before I found this religion, and I don't know what they're doing now, but I've, I've never felt more happy in my life." Wait a minute, you just left your wife and kids? Yeah, 
just a weight gone off me, man. How's that a weight? Isn't it good to, like, have a family? Ugh, you sound like my mother-in-law. Um, so, what do you guys get up to? Uh, a lot of praying and, and spending time together and, and, uh, and, and regaining hope, you know, and, and, and praising our, our, our Savior, you know, and then he recites the, the prayer that you guys were saying. And give, give me a power roll. Five. Five. So you, he starts to say the prayer and you kind of, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. Don't you, <laughs> you stop him before he can get started. Well, who is your savior then? Who is this guy? Well, well uh, we, we don't know for sure, but you know, it, it, uh, it, it, it's the whole universe. He's, he's at the center of the cosmos. If you, if you want to know more, you got, you got to talk to, to Preacher Smith. It sounds a little bit like a scam to me. What? Like, he I kind of... Uh, he goes pretty dark when you when you say that word in the face, and he goes, "What are you talking about, scam?" Well, he seems to be taking all your money. Like you, you willingly donate to him. Like when I was in there listening to the prayer, I was like, I felt something. But then when I got out, I was just like, "Hang on a minute, what the hell is going on here?" I feel like you're just being. Are you? Taken. You're still standing outside the car, right? Yeah. 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 So he gets out of the car. And he, he's about a foot taller than you. Um, and he starts to poke on the chest and he goes, what are you talking about? You a non-believer? You blasphemy? No, you I trying to steal I'm, my hope? I wouldn't say I'm a non-believer, but you've got a, you left a wife and kids behind. This ain't about me. I believe. I got faith. I got hope. You're the one that's talking like a crazy man. Well... Maybe I'd, everyone has a little bit of faith, but <coughs> you're just being crazy, man. You're being crazy. And he, uh, with that, he just uh, he he puts his fist and, and swings back. Um, so give me. I'm assuming you're going to want to dodge. Yeah. <laughs> um, we just got to find his. Da, 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 da. I got a go. two. I'm actually being lucky for a check. Oh yeah, you. He got a six, so you, you do dodge him, but he gets very close. Um, you sort of like, as he's kind of coming in, you kind of use his force to kind of get him to stumble, but in that process, kind of trip up yourself. So you're both kind of scrambling around on the ground. Um, and with that, you hear, oi! And Max is coming back around the corner, and he's he's sprinting towards you. Oh, shit. Um, and Max is big. I... Uh... Are there, do I see that the keys are still in the car? Like, are the keys Give me a luck still roll. in the car? I fail. Badly fail. Yeah, no, the keys are... You, you kind of scrounge up and you look in and, and the keys are not there. Um, Max um, grabs you um, from from the back. Like, he grabs you by the scruff of the shirt and he's, he's getting ready to... Uh, he kind of pulls you back to slam you back in the car. But I'm going to give you a chance to... Obviously, dodge. So you got it. Dodge. Um, I just passed. I got a twenty. Oh, I'm gonna use one look. I'm gonna use gonna one. Use one look. Okay, yeah. no problem. Just find your character sheet. Here it is. There it is. Cool. Um. All right. So yeah, he. You kind of. He goes to. He grabs you and comes to bring you back and you sort of just slip out under his arm um, and, and he sort of kind of, and he turns to look at you now. I was just going to, I, I'm sorry. Come on, Max. Come on now. Um, and at this point, the, the Greg on the ground, he goes, he, he's an unbeliever. He called us crazy. I, hey, hey, I'm not, I, I'm not an unbeliever. I just think you're being misled. Maybe um, down and, the right direction. And and when you we, all this is just Max is just getting into like he's getting angry now and he's starting to unbutton his shirt as he steps walks towards you. Max, come on, come on! I'm a sick man. You can't hurt a sick man. Um. So he yeah he he's just kind of walking towards you and, and he uh he swings his uh no he doesn't he, he uh. 
he brings up his foot to just like just to kick you like a big boot like a sparta kick um so give me i'm assuming you want to dodge of course i want to i got a five what is good i'm actually being lucky what the hell is going on this is why we call him lucky (laughs) oh i'm never this Uh, lucky i'm never this lucky jesus Um, cool. Um, so you, he he sort of you you kind of scrounge around and you stop moving. Um, uh, like do you do you know wrestling at all? Like WWE? Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know wrestling. Yeah, okay, so Max is Braun Strowman. <laughs> like, yeah. Okay, so he's a unit. <laughs> um, I, I, so he's he's get- just gonna keep coming for you. I want to get my footing and run because yeah, he's he's literally he's gonna he's gonna be slower than me at running. Surely, so I'm just gonna run. Um, cool. Give me a dex. Oh, I do not have good dex. Um, Forty-seven out of fifty. Okay. Did you get my message, uh, Niven? One moment. Okay. So pretty much as you're getting to run, you hear a shot ring out. And you turn back and... um, Because you're like, what? And you turn back and Max has a hole in his forehead and blood just starts to trickle down as he just kind of falls back and hits the ground. And you turn and... Standing outside of a, an open car door is your old buddy Nevin O'Leary, um, with That's a smoking it. handgun sticking out of his hand. Um, thank, thank you, Nevin. And I just ki- I just go over to Max's body and kick. Don't him. don't kiss me. No, no I um, kick. And, and Greg, Greg, uh, Greg <laughs> sees you him. and he, he kind of goes, Smith is going to hear about this, and he no, he he him. just goes off. Him. You want me to you stop him? Stop him. All right, I'll sh- I'll try to shoot him. Okay, give me a firearm roll. I'm gonna do a dodge. If that fails, can I try to run and tackle him or something? If you'd like, I'll just let's see. I think you're running in the other direction at this point. <laughs> so yeah, he's trying to get away. I got a seventy-two, so that's a fail. Okay, so yeah, now he he got a pretty good dodge. I hit, so I hit the car. You hit the car, and it kind of pings off, and he. Uh, he he starts sprinting off uh, down an alleyway. Shit. All right. Shit. Shit, what have I done? What the fuck is going on here? Some Why are cra- you here? Uh, some, cra- uh, some crazy shit, right? Some crazy shit. For some reason, I forgot everything about you guys. Uh, I'm, sure. I'm just going to sort of grab you as you're talking, and I'm going to say, uh, we got to find uh, Sticky. We, we need to search Max. He might have something. Or the car. The car's still here. Well, you search Max. I'm going to get sticky. Okay. So, so I'm just going to leave you guys just for, for one minute. Okay. You guys are kind of having this conversation. Um, Connor, you, you kind of feel like you're, you're waiting in there for a while. And then eventually, um, Abigail comes back and she said, um, uh, you, you can go now. Um, both uh, you know, I, I'd, be, I'd keep your head down. Um, uh, the the hammer is definitely out out for blood f- for you. Um, uh, here, uh, 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 Nevin gave me this, and um, she, she hands you a little note that says, uh, um, "We found Jack. Um, get here as soon as you can. Twenty two Coos on Street." Right. Well, thank you very much, Abigail, for all you've done. I don't know why the hammer else is out to kill me for whatever fucking reason he is. He's mad. Aye, right, that's the hammer. Well, but thank you for... he keeps our Irish people safe in Arkham. Well, I don't feel particularly safe at the moment, I must say. <laughs> I'm it was Irish. because your brother was working for the Italians. Right, so what's that got to do with me? I don't know. Anyway, thank you everything for everything, uh, Abigail. And uh, I guess I'm going to keep the cap down and low over my, <laughs> over my brow yep. and... Hmm. 
I failed me luck roll, so I've got no idea where Kuzon Street is. <laughs> so I'll ask you, somebody. <laughs> um, you you do you can order a cab, so you just say Kuzon Street and oh, okay, it. yeah. Um, so you you kind of get out, you find a hailer cab, and he uh, hoons you off to 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 all this. Um, in the time it's taken, um, so jumping back over to you're you're on the way to Kuzon Street now. Um, Nevin, um, Karen, uh, you guys, and, and Liam are obviously are obviously there, um, and um, you you, uh, you decide um, Liam goes, uh, hey, I'm going to go chase after. He he chased after the guy who who ran off. He's he was you know lucky said catch this guy, and and Liam went right, all right, okay, I'll go. So he's he sprinted off after this guy to go to go get him, um, and that that's left. Lucky and, and, and Nevin at the at the address. At this point, it's getting pretty late. It's probably around nine ten o'clock at night. At this point, um, you know, we, most uh, the lights are off in the building, except for the downstairs light. Well, we fired off two guns, so we're going quick. Yeah. All right. Um, uh, but at the same time, you, you've kind of uh, this is the lower south side. People hear gunshots all the time. Right. Um, so there, no one's sticking their head out. No one's going to call the cops on you. Like you, you, you know that you're, you don't have to stress about that too much. Mm-hmm. Um, so lucky, you know, you, you search Max and, and all you find is that little black book, um, which you now read the title of it's called the power of the universe. And you're so speechless that he dumbfounded. Yeah. Nobody can hear you. <laughs> You're mute. You're muted. <laughs> what the fuck is this shit? Um, so yeah, you, you kind of um do you do you look through the book or anything or uh, I just put it in if I have pockets on this white yeah, phone? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just go back to Nevin. Um give uh pick a number between uh, one and ten for me, lucky. Let's go for lucky number seven. Okay, you have uh, uh, Nevin has um, kind of knew he was coming here, and he's he's chucked a few things in the car that the uh, the some of the boys at the the pub had on them that he's just uh, borrowed. Um, so you uh, he hands you a a sawn off shotgun. Oh, sweet. Um, Nevin, you you've got uh, a pistol. You got your snub nose now. You got off at Larry. Um, you've got your knife, um, uh, and you all, give me a number uh, between one and ten. That's not seven. Three. Three. You have a uh, garrote, like a, you know. Yeah. Uh, um. Yeah. I just wrote down a bunch of weapons. <laughs> Cool. So you you um you guys got all your well, stuff my, and um, pretty much as you're you're getting my brass knuckle dusters as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have um, pretty much as you're you're about to get a <laughs> yeah exactly yeah um as you're about to kind of go up to the door a cab pulls up and you um you guys duck out of sight because you're worried about who it might be and um out of it looking cheery as all hell walks Mr Connor Ryan. Jesus Christ. Uh, all right. So I'm looking at the address. <laughs> Look, the gang's back together. We step out of the shadows. We're like, kind of, come on. This is oh, where the top of the evening to you, boys. How you this, doing? This is where the sticky guy lives. He's I don't know what his I don't know what his last name is, but let's see. His first name is Jack. Jack. Here's a Jack. This one right here. And of course, I'm pointing at the same check that uh, Max Fulton. Yeah. Let's. Uh, you said on level four, so we got to go up to fourth level. Mm-hmm. Let's go. Let's find out what this guy's. You know, we're not going to kill him. Yep. But we're going to find out unless we have to. Just don't do any. Don't cause a bloody mess, though. I don't want to see any blood. How did you want to deal with the the front door? It is locked. Well, it's, actually. It's- Lock, huh? Mm. Is it what kind of lock is on it? I do have some skill in locksmithing. Um, 
I mean, well, I think most of all three of you guys have, have, have got it used to getting into places you're not necessarily meant to be. Um, but, you know, it, it's just a basic kind of front door, um, just a single kind of lock with um, the chain on the other side. I'm just going to kick it open. Yeah, we're, uh, we're on the ground floor. Let's get up four floors before we kick open doors. Oh, I, I, I thought this was the door to his room. No, this is the apartment building. Oh, okay. Yeah, let's pick the lock. I don't want to break this door open. Well, actually, if it's got the, ch if we've got it open, we've seen the little chain there. Ah, mm -hmm. uh, let's see now. I need two knives. Well, I got a switchblade. Well, hang on. So you, you're going to pick the lock? Well, you said the door was open and it had a chain across it, so I assume. No, so it, it, yeah, no. So it's got the basic lock, and then you can tell it's going to have the the chain on the other side. So do a, do a lock pick roll. Okay, so this is the door going into the, the building. apartment building. Yes. And then... this stairs up. He's on the fourth floor. Well, his, his apartment's on the fourth floor. Oh, so I'm surprised there's a chain. What if somebody comes home from work? How do they get the chain off? Well, I, I also did mention the, the bottom floor, the, the lights are on. Oh. Because Max just went up here. Max went around the back. Why don't we just knock on the door? Well, oh, I'm, I'm, if he went around the back, did he get in? Apparently. I think so. He came back out. Yeah, All right, so let's, let's, just, let's, let's take a quick stroll around the back door and yeah. see if that's open. We'll say, cool. we'll say Lucky told us that he went around the back, so we'll yeah. go that way. Cool. So um, you guys uh, walk, walk around the, the, the back of the place, and I love how Lucky's eating. He's like hiding his food behind his hand. Um, so you guys walk around the back um, and you, you come around the, the back alley way um, and there's a little little courtyard. Um, you kind of open the, the, the gate um, and uh, there's a, the, the back door to the building um, is there and you can see light through it. The back door doesn't actually go into the full building. It, you can tell it goes into the downstairs apartment. Oh, and there's, say, no fire, yes. there's no fire escape or anything like that. You right. said this guy came around the back, huh? Yeah, definitely. And he was looking for that for the guy, the sticky jack. So. And was he gone long enough to have gotten inside? It was gone pretty long, yeah. Well, he must have gotten inside. What do you think he was doing in there? Well, they seem to have quite a lot of followers, so maybe they have a follower who lives in here or something. I don't know. Or they know someone. Well, let's just go. Let's just walk in the door if it's open. Okay, so um, you go up to the door and and it's 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 locked. Oh, shit. All right, let's, let's just go back around. The, go back around the front and see if we can pick that lock. I don't right. want to go in this apartment if there's somebody here. Yeah. So as we're going around, I'm looking at the windows and uh, the, eh, maybe there's even a code. So let's see if there's a fire escape. No fire there's escape. No fire escape. No fire escape. Yeah. Right. So. As we go around back, I'm looking at windows. Uh, curtains drawn, not drawn. Pretty much all the the, the lights are just. Uh, it, it just seems very black because you on the bottom floor as you come around the building. There's there's none at your height, so the the windows only start at the second floor, um, and it goes up four floors. Um, because on the side you are, that that that's would be the stairwell. On the inside, you'd assume. Um, so they start. They're too high, and it's just black straight the way up. Like pitch black. You can't even tell if there's curtains or anything. I wonder if there's uh, like a, if this doesn't work, is there a drain pipe that I could shimmy up to get on the second floor? Uh, yeah, there's, there's a drain pipe. But as you guys get to the front, the doors open ajar. And the, you can see the chain across and you can see, you can see some, some eyes looking through, through, the, through the crack in the door out at you. What do you want? We got to talk to uh, uh, Sticky Jack. Actually, we got business with him. Actually, if that's just one of them little chains, I'm just gonna fucking kick the door straight hard and charge it. Okay. Um. One second. I need to check one thing. But this might be Harry Larry, and uh, we don't want to hurt Harry Larry. <laughs> well, we it, 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 it might it, be. Uh, Charlie the Chipmunk. I don't know who this guy is. 
Whatever. Here we go. This is what I'm looking for. Here we go. Um, blah, 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 blah. Okay, cool. Cool. So you're going to kick the door. Give me a strength. Right. And I've got a 35 out of 55. Okay. So the person behind the door sees you coming. They're able to dodge. Um, the, the door does snap off quite easily. Uh, and you, you come in and you, you, you see it's an old woman. And she's pretty bedraggled and, and uh, she kind of smells a little bit and stuff. And she's sort of like, why did you do that? I just uh, head for the stairs. And, and I'm going to just slap a $2 in her, in her hand. Jack's in the what? basement. You keep giving away like 50 bucks worth of money. <laughs> what the hell? That's all right. It's two bucks. Jack's got, in the I'll... basement. And she walks off and um, she goes, she's, he's in the basement in here. And she walks off into her apartment. She very clearly on the door, it says landlady. And she walks, uh, walks okay. into her apartment, which has the light on. I thought he was on level four. Let's go down. Let's go. She says he's in the basement. She goes, she, he's in here in the basement. She walks into her. So she's sort of gesturing into her apartment. Let's go kick the shit out of him. Just hold on for a second. You know what? That seems really fishy to me. You know, let's be careful. This sounds right. feels like a trap if you ask me, but uh, let's go down. Right, lock it on the gun. Keep that gun pointed. Because yeah, why does it say fourth, fourth floor and now he's on the basement? I've got my okay. shotgun. So we're going to go down the stairs. So, um, so she kind of, uh, you, you guys enter her, uh, her apartment and, um, yeah, she, she, uh, she kind of, um, as you walk in, you, you, she says, I got a pot in the boil. Uh, you just come on in and take a seat. I'll make you coffee and I'll, I'll go get Jack for you. I um, will go get Jack for you. Don't um, worry about it. Um, so she, so who, who entered the room first? I did. Okay, you and who, who's bringing up the rear? Lucky. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Lucky's bringing up the rear. Okay, where, whereabouts, how close were you to, to Nevin, Connor? How close was I? Uh, well, I'm a little lost on the orientation here. He's probably going to be it's about not five. Big, it's not a big apartment. So you'd probably, the, the furthest away you'd be from him is like two feet. Oh, if, I, if that's the furthest I could be. I was thinking about maybe four or five, but. That's okay. Okay, yeah, no, it's, it's not that kind of spread out of place. Um, but pretty much as um, – give me a uh, – she. Um, this woman turns around, and she's got a mad look in her eyes. As you guys walked in, you, you were seeing all this, this writing and, and weird stuff written all over the walls and stuff and what looks like blood and, and feces and, and, and things like that, and you get this really bad whiff of, of smell. Lucky, um, you hear a massive slam – and behind you, and, and the, the front door slams shut, and, and like this blue sheen just shakes over the door. Um, give me a sanity check on that. Um, as, um, as, also, that you just hear a scream as, as this woman turns around and she's grabbed a boiling hot um, thing off, off the stove as she's walked in, and she's just swung around and thrown the coffee at, uh, at Nevin, the, the, the boiling hot water. She's thrown that at you. And she's jumped at Connor with a knife in the simultaneous move. So can I, can I dodge? Yes, I you're pass. both going to. You pass? pass. Okay, so yeah, pass. Uh, take one D. Um, uh, take take one point for me. Um, got, Connor and Nevin, you got to do a dodge. I got 18 out of 35. So, okay, I, so I, you, I was expecting something. I I sort of dived out of the way. Yeah, you you dodged the coffee. All right, let's. Right, and I just. Kind of run back out the door, or not run back, but step back out of the door. What was your What was your dot? Did you pass 16, your dot? Oh yeah, sixteen, easy. She no, got a go thirteen. She got a thirteen. She got a thirteen. Uh, do you want to spend the luck to match it? Sure. Why not? Yep. Okay. One second. Can I go to a shooter as well? Maybe. Yep. No problem. I think I'm gonna shoot her too. Okay, so yeah, I, I'm I fail. <laughs> I keep mixing up your character sheets. I can get rid of these two because they're not in the game anymore. Um, okay, God, you've spent a lot of luck. Oh no, you haven't. It's sanity. You've lost. Oh yeah, I've, I'm I'm shit on sanity. I'm 
<laughs> ah, Saints preserve us, Michael. Um, yeah, on that note, um, can I get sanity checks from both Nevin and Connor? Because you've just been attacked by a crazy yeah. lady. I rolled a 95 for shooting her, so I failed. I rolled a 007. And I got a nice 26, so I, I, I'm quite happy with this. Okay. <laughs> and I got... And I got a double O eight for yeah. my sanity roll. <laughs> I, I, I shot at the ceiling instead of her. Well, you like you it. were you were thrown off by the the door slam and everything, and then so you kind of just wildly shot and and, and things. Um, I'm still so, taking one point of damage, or sanity damage. Yeah, no, pro- yeah, all of you take one um, because this is not healthy. Um, yeah, I'll take another one. I'm on thirty four then. Okay, sweet. So um, you, you get a really good shot in there, um, Nevin. And, and Connor, you shot as well, correct? I haven't got a gun. Oh, of course you... Yeah, and they didn't get, get you one out of the car. Um, no, cool. So you, um, you, you shot and, and she, she goes down. Um, she, she's got... Because you got an 07, which was a... Can you give me a... Okay, I'll do the damage. I got that snub nose, so yeah, I don't know what the damage is on it. How, mu- how much damage. blood is that? <laughs> okay, so she's still alive. She's down, but she's still alive. How much blood is there like, on the floor? There's well, the entire place is blood the, the are covered in it. There's I, I'm, I'm going to roll to see if Con, I pass yeah. Okay. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm going to... I got a 94. <laughs> okay, so you've just started heaving and throwing up and like... And and things and and yeah yeah you're not doing too good. I'm going to put my chat my foot on her chest, and I'm gonna okay. flip open my my uh, switchblade and slice her throat just in one. Oh, yeah. So she, as you're pretty much as you're doing it, she's kind of laughing and cackling, and she's saying all these these weird words. Um, it's actually the the same words that the prayer. Was saying she's like, right. I don't know, I don't know, I don't as, shut your <laughs> shut your fucking mouth. I'm going to roll under yep. the con. <laughs> I failed. Okay, what you pass. What the fuck out. is all this going on? What the fuck? You just you right. just straight up faint. Right, he faints. I'm going to grab the shotgun. If he's got any shells in his pockets, I'm grabbing them as well. Okay, just leave him there. We're going to go. Let's go find this fucking. I think I'm going to kill him now, just to kill him. I don't think that is going to be a problem in my book or Michael's. Let's go. All right. Okay. So, so where do you want to go? Sick. Oh god. Uh, we're heading towards the basement. Okay. Um, right. Geez. I'm also breaking the shotgun, popping out the spent Use fire cartridge. Shells. Yeah. Cool. So you guys uh, head on uh, downstairs. It's it's pitch black. Uh, give me a give me a. Give me a spot hidden, both of you. I'm looking for a light switch, but I've got a 20. Yeah, yeah you I've find a light a... switch. Yep. Yeah, you find a light switch, and um, down here, you just find more of the writing, and um, you see a- an older man um, who's wearing a cardigan. His, his chest spins ripped open, and his, his guts are just hanging everywhere, and the writing's everywhere, and, there's, and things. And you, there's... Um, Candles that have been put out uh, and, and things like that. And, and you'd probably say, looking at this guy, that it would probably be the old woman's husband. Yeah. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't match up for, for what Jack looks See, like. Um, that's why you got to be nice to your wife because she'll yeah. do this to you when you're... Okay. Sanity check from both of you, though. Come home late from work and fooling around with the girls. I got a 50... 50 what is that? That's a six. 56. That is not a pass. Wait. No, that's not a pass. Okay, uh, 1D4. I'm feeling quite delightful with a 22. Well, yeah, I think so we're, getting, one point. we're getting a nude to it. One, two, three points of damage. Okay, so can I get confirmation on where you guys are actually sitting on your uh, sanity at the moment? I'm basically I'm at seventeen percent. I've I've got three more points to go before it gets to twenty percent. Okay. I am, I am only at forty six, but 46. I have all, I have only lost four points of sanity in this whole game. I'm on thirty four sanity. You're on thirty four, and um, just Connor, you're on 
53, is that correct? No, I'm on 55, and uh, 52 is my 20% point. Okay, cool. I, uh, I've just been in Arkham a lot longer, so I'm used to seeing fucking weird shit. You grow up here. Cool. <clears throat> so he ain't here. He must be up on the fourth floor. I'm right going to stay if I wake now, up. From my memory, were there any hurricane lamps or anything in this building? Like in that woman's room? Uh, in the lamps? apartment? Uh, I, I'm guessing no, because I, yeah, no. Never like this. Like that. Or, or uh, the old, because this is 1921, so the old oil lamps? Uh, no, it's, it's all, it's all, is a, did they have electric light back then? They've had electric lights for about 30 years. Oh, yeah. No, it's all, it's all electric light. Yeah. So. No, because of, I, mean, yeah. I, I still have oil lamps in my house. Oh, and <laughs> decorations. Well, la di da. Well, you know, when we have brown outs and power outs, sometimes that's true. That's true. Um, yeah. I, I do give the room a glance around. Is there anything sitting in the room that's worth looking at? Or is just like, like he ain't here. Let's go. No, he, uh, all you see is um, like a big. Um, on the ground is, is a, like a, a fire axe. Okay. One of those big ones. That, that's it. All right. Let's go wake up a uh, sleepy boy upstairs. Yeah, if yeah, he's asleep. I, did, I did roll to wake up early, but I rolled a 98, so I didn't. <laughs> okay. okay. Well, um, uh, get, get, uh, the guy is trying, I'm assuming you guys are trying to wake him up a little bit, slap well, his if face. There's a, if, there's like, if there's actually a kitchen. Yeah, there is. Yeah. Grab a glass and pour some water in it and throw it on his face as I walk oh. by him. And I say, Get yeah. up. <laughs> so that, 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 uh, that wakes you up. As I wake up, I just throw up again. Oh, fucking hell. Yeah, because it was like brown water. <laughs> um, cool. So, you, you guys, uh, what, what would you like to do? Uh, let's, let's head on up to the fourth floor. This is, a, this is some crazy, wacky shit. Hey, Connor, give me back my shotgun. Ah, uh, just pick up the axe over there, boy. I got a little bit of business upstairs, and I'm just okay. hitting up the hit. I'll go get the axe and then come. Okay, as soon as you hit that step, you, you know, how you feel like when you go on a roller coaster, something in your stomach just drops out. Yeah, so as soon as you hit that step, your stomach just drops out, and everything starts to spin around. It looks like you're in a kaleidoscope, and you kind of come into a corridor. There's stairs going off all different ways. Not like that painting where there's like stairs up. Yeah, that is what sure. you're seeing. Yeah, that's 100% what you're seeing. There's, if there's a door in front of you and then there's kind of steps going all over the place. You can't see the other guys anymore because you just sprinted straight up. Yeah. Okay. Okay, well. Please. Okay, so. Did, you, did anyone follow straight after him? It was only for me going to get the axe. Did, did you go, like, were you right behind him, Connor? Oh, it's Nevin. Were you, were you right behind him? Yeah. Okay, well, you, you, so you've, the same thing's happened to you, but you can't see Connor. So you, you've ended up, there's a door in front of you, but you can't see Connor. Fuck. I'm going to close my eyes. <clears throat> this is not fucking happening. I'm going to do a um, power roll, maybe. Yeah. Do I hear him? <laughs> yeah, you can hear him scream that. 46. Where is, are you? I'm here fuck? too. 46 out of 65, so that's a regular pass. What the fuck is going on? Okay, Connor. so lucky at this point, um, you've come up the stairs, you've got the axe, uh, and you've, you've hit the stairs like, oh, they've obviously run up, and the exact same thing happens to you. So you guys go through all that stuff. Give me a sanity check. I failed. <laughs> oh, I succeed again. Fuck. 81. 81 failure. I failed as well. Fuck, you know. Okay, uh, 1d4, guys. Fucking. F I got four Oof. again. I lost four that time. So I'm on 30. I'm on 30 sanity. So that means you've. Because you were on 45. So yeah. have you lost 20%? Uh, oh, hold on. What the hell has happened here? <laughs> I have lost, in two more points, I will have lost 20%. Have I lost? I, I think so. Uh, you'll be losing one, so. Connor. Right. So now you're on 54? 50, 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, like you guys can all hear each other, but I said there's all corridors. You can't see each other. What you can all see fuck? a single door ahead of you. Um, door ahead of us. How about behind yeah. us? What's behind us? Behind, uh, so behind Niven, there's a drop. So um, I can't and then go it, back. It, looks, it looks like the stairs then go kind of underneath. Like the, uh, you're on the like bottom half of the upside down stairs. Um, behind Connor, you see another door. And behind Lucky, you see some stairs up. I, uh, by the way, I did lose, I've lost 20% of my sanity. You've lost 20%. Yeah. Okay. Um, give, all right. Yeah. He's going to have permanent. Well, not permanent, but... Um, gonna you've gone deaf. So you can't hear the others, and you're just sort of hearing this this faint ringing, um, and uh, you kind of... Nothing's coming in. You're just like, oh, God, what's... You know? And um, you start... The only thing you, you slowly start to hearing is piping. Like a, like a flute playing. What the fuck? I... I'm just shouting, obviously. I can't hear any if anyone yeah. responds. What the right. Fuck? Well, unfortunately, I don't know. He's lost his hearing. So I'm saying, down, boys, down! And I'm going to fire one round through one door and one round through the other door, break the action, and put two more shells in there. So you're shooting through the closed doors? Boom, boom. Okay. All right. Um, I, so you, you shoot the doors, nothing happens. Like, the doors have shrapnel on them, but... Nothing, nothing happens. You reload. Yeah. You only have two more shots left. You've got the two that you've put in, and then you've got two more shells in your pocket. All right. That's all I need to know. Now, I'm looking yeah. for the architect to see which door he was going to try and get me to go through. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <that's laughs> what Nevin wants to do first. Yeah. I would say that I've got no choice because I can't go back. It's a drop. i got a door ahead of me, so mm-hmm. I'm going to open up the door. Cool. Um, so you, you walk into the room and it all looks like it's just a normal, normal apartment. Um, and you kind of, uh, th- there's nothing out of, it's suspicious about it in the, in the light. You can't really see too much. The, the, the window seems to be like, um, there's like a, a black kind of moving sludge over the window. So it's not like letting much light in. Um, well, I got my gun. Mm-hmm. Is there a light switch? Uh, you, you you feel along the the wall and uh, and you you find a light switch. Yeah, but you've got a diff. You've got into the room to to reach it. Right, that's fine. I want to mm-hmm. get away from the crazy room in the back. Yeah, and uh, I'm gonna step inside and flip on the light, holding my gun. Cool. So the what you are uh, greeted with is uh, you enter the apartment and you are greeted with um, a family. Uh, hanging from the ceiling, from next from their ropes. Uh, there's a daughter, like a young girl, a uh, young boy, a little bit younger than the, than the female, um, a, a woman, and then a man. And beneath them uh, is kicked over chairs. Like, you know, like... Um, they all committed box, suicide. Goldilocks, it's all the different size chairs. So yeah. you can see which... The biggest chair was obviously for the little boy, and that they've all committed suicide. And they're all, they're all hanging from the ceiling. And, and um, there's more writing on the walls. Um, of everything, um, give me give me a sanity check. Yeah. Uh, twenty seven. I passed that one. Cool. Yeah, you, you've you've seen death before. Um, you, you've yeah. kind of seen you know this sort of stuff. So, but it's still kind of unnerving for sure. Like everything's not making sense, and you're, yeah. I'm gonna walk over to the window. You mm-hmm. said some of the. And I'm going to see if I can see out of the window. No, it's just, it's sort of just like a black mass. Shit. Uh, I'm going to look around the room and see if there's anything, any other doors, any other. Uh, there's just more doors and there's, there's like a uh, bedroom. There's two bedrooms, obviously the parents room, the, the children's room, bathroom, kitchen, all that sort of stuff. Uh, as you come back into the living room though, uh, you do look out through the the door that you came in, and you see at the other end of the hall, there are stairs now, going up. Going up, not down. Yep. Up. Oh, shit. 
Now all I want to do is get out of here. This is some crazy shit. I'll burn the fucking building to the ground, but got to get out first. So I'm going to just cautiously head that direction towards the stairs going up. Oh, no problem. Uh, let's jump over to Lucky. So yeah, you're, you're, you know, can't hear anything, but uh, um, ahead of you, you've got a door and then you've, you've got stairs up behind you. Uh, I'm going to go with the stairs, follow the stairs. Okay. So you, you uh, go up the stairs um, and then somehow you, you, you start going up the stairs and then you're walking down the stairs and you've come back. Like it, it's like without you realizing you've sort of walked up and then you've kind of come back to the same spot. Like you've gone up the stairs and somehow you've been walking down. What the fuck? I'm going to take a point of sanity for that because yep. I'm going to take. Um, I'll just try the door then if the door's still there. Cool. So you, um, you open the door and there's nothing but blackness beyond. And there's no, 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 there's no light whatsoever. Everything just seems completely, completely black. The piping gets louder you're hearing this piping. It's starting to, 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 you can definitely hear it now. It's not just a, a weird thing. You can definitely, definitely hear, hear this noise going on. What the fuck? I just walk into the room. Cool. Give me a, uh, you can pick a jump decks or a dodge. What is my best one? <laughs> I'll go with decks. Okay. I got a 16. Cool. So you kind of step in and your foot just goes down. Um, so you realize there's no floor whatsoever. Um, and uh, it, you, you realize it's just an expansive space. And as, as you do that, you just hear a, uh, an air splitting scream um, as, you, as you step in. Um, that kind of makes you, you stumble and uh, you, you kind of fall in and then you grab the ledge of the door um, as, you're, as you're there. Um, so give me give me a strength roll to see if you can climb up. I got an eighty nine. I failed. Okay, so you, you sort of just you just hang in there and, and you kind of everything's too much going on. The piping's getting louder. And it just comes too much, and you your your hand slips and um and and, and you just fall in, into the black. Uh, let's jump over to 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 Connor Ryan. Right now. Did it? Did it? Did I hear any of this piping or anything else like that? Or is that just? No, you can't hear the piping. Right. Well, I'm obviously not seeing any stairs. Correct. Correct. You've seen two doors. So I should just walk up to one of them. Okay. Um, and I shall have the gun down, and I'm actually going to start singing. When Irish eyes are smiling. All the world seems bright and. Okay. Cool. Give me a uh, give me a high or low. Low this time, I think. Oh, you froze Damn, up. Freeze again. Yep. Am I back? You okay. Are. Uh, high or low? Low. Okay. Cool. So you uh, go to your door and um, you open the door and the room. It's, it's very similar to the one that I described to 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 Nevin. It looks like a, just a basic apartment. Um, it, you, it, everything um, except that you realize it takes you a little while because it's pitch black. But there's only, it looks like the lamp is on the floor and it's pointing up. So like, you know how a lamp would hang down? It's actually hanging up. The lights are off. And the lights are off. And I'm not going to find a light switch in an upside down room. Right. So... Well, there you go. No. Oh, it's a little early, so I can't do a Fred Astaire on it. <laughs> um, I'm assuming I you would have a, would have a lighter or something like that, or um, yeah. give me give me give me a give me a luck roll. Oh, twenty. So okay, yes. so you you can re you kind of once you realise that the that's on you 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 kind of manage to reach up and you jump and you feel a, a, a light switch and you manage to, to flick that on and you realize that 
everything switched. So you're on the ceiling, you're walking on the ceiling, everything's on, 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 the, uh, on the floor, which is upside down. And in the middle of this room, uh, there's a man sitting in the chair, which is on the ceiling. And he's, he's, um, he's slid his wrists and the blood is dripping down on top of the lamp. So it's, it's dripping up. So it's kind of pulling and, 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 and yeah, exactly. Um, so it's defying gravity and everything. It's a, and then there's just slashes on his, his arms and, and his throat. Uh, and then there's a razor blade um, on the chair next to him. Again, writing all over the walls um, and, and, and things like that. Give me a, a sanity check, my good sir. Absolutely. Well, that one I did fail. And that is a 1d4. <laughs> oh, that's three. So that makes me down to 51. I've gone bananas permanently. Okay. Um, right. What am I going to do for you? Here we go. Are you down to zero? Well, no, I'm he's just I've, a... I've hit the 20% point. Well, it's still temporary. You just need oh, to. Yeah, he's got a temporary. Um, so he, you. Um, Talking months. Have, have just gone into a, like a bit of a berserker rage. You're, you're just feeling pure rage, and, and it doesn't matter. Um, you've kind of forgotten what it is you were there to do. You've just got this, this, this pure fire now to just kill and attack and, and not think. It's, it's, you, you, you're just driven by this rage in your, in your belly. All right. Is there, is there a, a door on the other side of this upside down room? That's about all uh, I know right now. There's, 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 there's doors in the apartment, but you'd have to like climb up and cause you're on the ceiling. Right. Then yeah. I'm going to turn around and run to the other door. The other door. Okay. So as you reach the door, even though you're, you're nuts, sir, you get to the door and you feel a sudden feeling of acute dread as you get close to this door. Something awful is about to happen. That's then the feeling gonna, as you get then close Then I'm going to gonna the kill the awful. Okay. So you're just going to run into the room? Okay, so you run into the room and uh, the door is open. You see an enormous, huge, bulbous thing filling the entire space of the room. Within its pale, slaky, flaky skin is bundled and crammed together and a bright yellow-red vicious liquid bleeds from hundreds of weeping sores. You start to hear a piping in your ear and it's getting louder and louder and it goes stronger and it's disorientating as you witness the scene. Um, give me a sanity check mm -hmm. at this point. <laughs> oh, goody, goody, goody gumdrops. Uh, oh, now I've only got 51, haven't I? Can I spend on luck? <laughs> Can you spend luck on sanity? No, I don't know. No. No, no, you, no, you can't. Right, so can I, fail? Can I failed. 1d10. Oh, I figured it'd be something nice and easy like that. Yeah. Oh, oh, D10s are what I roll anyway, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, a mere nine. <laughs> oh, yeah. You guys do not want to catch back up with Connor. <laughs> um, okay. So you're not feeling so good. You're definitely, um, what do you do when you, like when you encounter this thing, do you shut the door? What's your, Yes, I'll shut the door. Okay, so you, you close the door. Um, give me a dodge. A dodge. Oop. And you're lucky because you're kind of dodgy right now. Oh, that's true enough. Well, I've got 11 out of... Yeah, dodge, 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 dodge. Oh, cool. I can spend a... Can I spend a luck on dodge? Yes. Then I've got an extreme dodge. 10. Okay, so... Um, Pretty much, uh, you see some tentacles just start come out of the creature and to, to spring at you, and you close the door and you actually slam the tentacles in the door, um, and then you kind of feel your the whole like feel the same feeling you felt when you first hit the stairs. Um, you feel a uh, like y your stomach drop, and um, you're standing in front of a, a doorway, and then behind you there's some stairs up. So you've kind of gone to a different different spot. 
Um, so I'll leave that for there. Nevin, you, you've headed up uh, the stairs. I'm sure you were heading up those stairs. Right. Yeah. Yep. And I'm talking to myself by this point. I'm like, you know, Nevin, look, you've survived worse than this. You've, uh, well, you've survived your cousin so far. But uh, just keep your head up on your shoulders and, you know, this is uh, some sort of a magic trick that's going on there, trying to drive you crazy. Oh, so you get to uh, another landing and uh, there's, there's two doors at this landing. Um, there's one directly in front of you down the hall and then there's one ne- like off t- to the side, like next to the door, but it's on the side of the landing. Eeny, meeny, miny, moe. <laughs> uh, I'm going to pick the one uh, closest to me. Okay, so that would be the, so you've still got to go down the hall and then to the, to the left. Okay, yeah. so as you're walking towards that door, um, you hear a um, yelling, you hear a screaming, and then all of a sudden, uh, give me a dodge roll. 37. Uh, that is, uh, ooh, can I spend two points of luck? Yes, of luck, yeah. Right. Yeah. I think that's the first bit of luck you've spent. It is. No, oh, it isn't. You've done- it isn't because I, I started with 50 and I'm down to 44, so now I'm down to 42. Okay, cool. So I must have spent I, it along the way somewhere. Yeah, I just hadn't marked that off. That's my bad. Okay, cool. Sweet. So um, you, you've managed to, to kind of, you hear the screaming and you look up and you skip back as Lucky slams down into the spot of where you just were. Hello. He's just falling from the ceiling. Um, you can hear again, by the way, now, Lucky. Holy shit. It's Dude, you almost scary. hit me. You almost uh, hit me. Can you give me um, uh, 1d4 for me, Lucky? Two. I take two damage from four. Where the fuck did you come from? I have not a fucking clue. Have I you seen... i here for a while. Man. Have you seen Connor? Connor? I have not a clue. Jesus Christ. But There's a bunch of dead people up. back there. There's... What have we got into, man? What have we got into? It's some kind of a magic trick. Some kind of an illusion to drive us all crazy. It's got to be to do with that Jacob Smith fella. Surely. Yeah, or somehow Jack's involved Wait. in this. Wait, I've got that black book. What's the as black you book? Out, as you pull out the black book, the piping gets so loud for you now, Lucky. And Nevin, you start to hear the, the, the piping as well. And it's just as loud as it is for Lucky pretty much as soon as he pulls that book out. So I'm hearing it loudly? Yeah. What the fuck? Oh, fuck. I just throw the book. I throw it. I catch it and I throw it back. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why you threw the book at me. Nobody throws the book at me. <laughs> I, I open the book then. No. I've got it back. I open the book. Is there anything? Um, you hear an S- the, the, the writing is, is moving around. Okay. Ah. Sanity check, yeah? I the okay, when louder. you open them, I keep... Ooh. Yeah, the piping's louder and, and the writing's moving around, so I need a sanity check from Lucky. I failed. Oh, you failed? Uh, 1d4. Yeah. Get rid of the fucking book. Three. Three. So just... Three? Yeah. Okay, so... I'm 26 now. You, you took the sanity, you took damage. Um, your ears are starting to hurt now. You're in a, a lot of pain from, from the noise and everything. If oh. Nevin talks to you, you can't hear that. You don't know whether it's over because it's so loud for you or whether you just can't hear him. Okay. So I'm, I'm putting my hands over my ears. Throw the yep. fucking book away. I just keep looking at the book because... Well, I'm not- okay. Um, as as all this is going on, um, you hear like a like a a kind of gnarly, gnarly growling from behind you, Nevin, and you turn around to see uh, Connor running up the stairs behind you with a with a mad look in his eyes. 
Okay. I'm going to pull out my gun and shoot him in the head. I'm already, I'm coming up the stairs singing it's a long way to fucking Tipperary, and I'm going to lose <laughs> both barrels at Nevin. Okay, so Nevin, let's have you first. Give me a, well, okay, Connor, you do a dodge. Nevin, you do a firearm. Well, I guess we're both shooting at each other. So. Actually, because you're, you're in a mad rage. Um, When you were in the mad rage, you, you would have, um, like, you, you, you kind of just w went mad. So you, you probably dropped your shotgun, to be, be honest. You just, it's all about physical hand stuff. Oh, okay. I, was just, I just said, um, yeah. Okay, well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I got a 23. And me dodge was a nice, comfortable 14. You probably you're better than, okay. than do I you want to spend? Do you want to spend luck? Yeah, like I it do. It becomes a battle of luck. <laughs> How much luck have you got there? Then? <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, I don't think that's fair. So I'm going to say that the... Uh, I don't really want to yeah, shoot I wouldn't, him. I wouldn't, sp I, I wouldn't let, leave, um, let you spend more than like 10 anyway. So I think that's sort of the limit on, on luck spending. Otherwise, it becomes a bit too powerful. Yeah. But anyway, so you shoot. He, he, um, he kind of uh, dodges out of the way. Um, and, uh, and then he, he's coming for you. Um, Lucky is, is, is ahead of you, though. Lucky kind of is on the ground ahead of you. Okay. Well, I'm going to back away from him as he's coming up. I dropped the book. <laughs> okay. No, yeah, so Connor, you're going for, for Lucky? Wait, Connor, oh, is he closer? Going. Yeah. He's on the ground, right? Yeah, he's just turned and looked up at you now. Right. Then I'm going to swing me boot straight into his kisser. Can I dog? Um, I'm going okay. to try a dog. 24. <laughs> Oh, I've got to hit him, haven't I? Okay, well, I think we're caught matched even there. I've got 24 as well. Oh. Okay. So we'll just, like, match, as you say, match Stephen, you dodged it, um, and, and he kind of swung through and almost got you. But it, just, it was just almost there. Um, Tom, you kind of backed away, um, and, and you came to the, to the door that you were going to go through, um, the one on the side there. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to go through it because I'm going to leave these crazy people behind okay. me. Uh, sweet. So okay. you, you open the door um, and uh, again, you're, you're in an apartment and you can see three doors. There's like a living room of an apartment. You can see three doors. There's one close to you to the, to the right and then there's, there's two against the back wall. Okay, I'm going to head for the two against the back wall and okay. uh, I'll take the one on the right. Okay, um, cool. So when you get to uh, get to this this door, hang on. There's this. Now I'm kind of looking behind me to see if they come through the door that I came through. You know, because I'm more worried about them coming after me. Because Connor had this crazy look in his eye. Hey, I still have my axe. I, I still have it, probably on the ground by now. You do still have your axe, yeah. Um, so they they seem. Connor preoccupied with their like little fight so just before i have you do your stuff with the door um yeah now it's lucky's turn so do you want to you want to swing at connor yeah i'm gonna swing for connor okay 24 again what <laughs> i got 24 oh. again mm, i think i'll fight back <laughs> okay so you're gonna not dodge you're gonna do attack yep uh-huh <laughs> oh two. Oh fuck Ooh. he's unarmed he is unarmed um okay. so what's an unarmed what's what's it's a 1d3 plus damage bonus so mm -hmm. Not um, so yeah 1d3 one, one uh do you want me to roll it or well, i just I'll rolled roll a it. d6 and divided by two so three uh you got a one i got a one on my 1d3 okay. so all right you can take one point lucky he just okay. gets you in the kisser 
Okay, so now Connor, it's it's your it's your move. You've what well, um you you instead of dodging you attack. So what do you want to do next? Right. So now that I'm nice and close to him, so he can't swing that fucking axe, I'm just gonna grab him by the throat and crush it. I'm gonna kick him in the nuts because I've still got my. I'm just gonna. That's what I'm okay, gonna do. Yes, you're both gonna attack you again. Yeah. Um, Remember, I'm in a blind rage, so. Yeah. I got a 77, so that's a fail. Shit. Oh, dear. And I got a nice even 30. <laughs> cool. Um, cool. So, uh, damage bonus unarmed, 1d3. Two. Take two points. I'm on six. And he, he's... Now, my, my question cool, so is... He's, he's throttling him. I'm throttling him, yep. so... Does he have... Cont- yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, no, so you, you're throttling him. That's why you, you took the, the points and he's kind of struggling and probably trying to reach out. He can see Tom through the door for like, you know, help. You're just, you're just sort of sitting there and, and things. And he's, I'm assuming, still struggling to kick you off him. Um, but let's jump over to Nevin. So, Nevin, you've gone to the door. Um, as you reach the door, you, you're getting a really kind of really bad feeling of, um, in, in, the, in the pit of your, your stomach. You're like, I mean, more so than than what you have and, and you, you've just got there's something telling you and, and just that you, you shouldn't be here and, and just to just to, to turn and run well I'm kind of doing that I just don't know which way to run oh from okay. the door from the door you're saying or just just in general like but you've gone towards this door okay maybe I'll try the door next to it okay so you you open the the door next to it and you are greeted uh, by th- there's a man on the floor, and he he's, his his clothes are all ripped, and he, he's covered in blood, and and there's gashes all over his body that he you can see he's slashing at them with a knife, and he's holding the dagger, the Na- Native American dagger, and he's slashing at his skin and opening new wounds, which they just don't seem to bleed. He's just not he, like the blood kind of soaks back in, and 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 things like that. There, there, there's papers. Uh, is strewn around him and there's scratches all over the walls and the, in the door. And he, he's just screaming and yelling and he, and, and you, you know, this looking at him, that, that this is sticky Jack. And, um, he, uh, he just, he screams, screams and looks at you with mad as eyes. He's like, stop it. I can't, I can't st- kill myself. It's not working. I want to <laughs> Take a sanity check for me. Yeah, I'm still. Am I still struggling? I'm still like a lot. Yeah, I'm still struggling. Can I punch mm-hmm. Aaron by any chance? Can I go to try to punch Connor? Yeah, you can. And the Nick, I'm just gonna find out what. Yeah. I, I did it. not pass. I got a 47 out of out of 42. Okay, a 1d10 for me. Wow. Where's my 1d10? Oh. So what do you use every it's time? It's the one I use for everything. Yeah. <laughs> uh, only three. However, that uh, does put me uh, past my 20%. So everyone's over 20% at this point. Brilliant. Are you surprised? Are you surprised? No, not really. This, this, this is where this game really kicks in. Um, so you, you, um, just, you, you just start screaming and, and um, you just kind of, so your back, voice, definitely. yeah, your, your <laughs> voice just starts to to feel sore just by how much you're just screaming and um and, and things and everything just sort of starts to, you know, when you're, you're drunk and everything kind of starts to wave, like I, yeah, you you're, you're getting that kind of feeling. You just kind of can't like you find your footing and you just seem to sit like you're you're in a, a different kind of space and it's all kind of out of time for you. Um, so yeah, lucky. Did you want to go for a, a clocking of? You yeah. kind of reach to your side and you can feel your axe. Um, so you can use that if you want to just kind of yeah, come in. I'm and... going to take a disadvantage because I am like... I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. So 18 and now okay. um, 19. <laughs> okay, so 19. Well, basically, I'm just around his throat real close. So, um, so you're going to have... Uh, I'm going to give you a strength check to see if you can like keep on him because he's struggling. Okay. Oh yeah, twenty five, no problem. In fact, okay, but he he got a nine. He got a nineteen. So uh, with an axe, I need to find out what damage of an axe is. 
Um, oh, I have a damage bonus as well. I'm, yeah. Let's go with uh, let's go with a one d six. With oh. my one d four damage bonus, I do six damage. That's it. I'm done. Yeah. Yeah. So you you uh you kind of reach out, you find the axe, and you just bring it in, suck right, and it just digs straight into to uh, uh Connor Ryan's beautiful, pretty little face, um and like like a rush, the sound just kind of comes back, um and and you can hear everything, and you're hearing Nevin scream, the piping's going crazy, you can hear screaming off from the corner from this other person screaming about they can't die and all this shit, and you can almost see in Connor's face. The rage sort of just drops out of his eyes as he realizes what's kind of going on, and it all kind of comes next to it. You throw up on him, brilliant, awesome, and so yeah, Connor just kind of, and he just clocks off to the side, and he hits the ground, and so you're sitting there, you've got blood all over you. <laughs> Nevin's screaming his head off and, and kind of stumbling around the room. I don't need to this, kill. I don't need to kill him. And then um, you can see this other guy now appear. He kind of he, he's kind of crawling out of the like juddery movements crawling out of this this doorway um what what would you like to do i'm gonna oh, shoot him i'm gonna okay so gonna go for head as well with okay so you're both gonna go for this guy so nevin because of your your where you are uh i'm gonna give you a damn um a what do they call it penalty dice because you're kind of like all over okay. the place um, so your aiming's not ideal for you. So do that. And um, Lucky, give me a give me a fight roll. Fifteen and an eight. I, so I, I got, pass actually. I got seventy five, so I failed. Okay, so um, you you failed. Okay, so you, uh, Nevin, you 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 shoot him. You you shoot him right in the chest. Boom! Right right in his heart, and he kind of flings back, and uh, you see the bullet go in. And then the blood sort of drip out and then it sucks back up and he goes, I told you it's not working. And then his knife hand just starts swinging at you. So can you give me a dodge roll? Oh yeah. I'm going to roll a sanity for obviously what I did to Connor. So yeah. I think um, <laughs> apparently when I, when I shot 24. him, yeah. I then decided to take a couple steps forward and hover over him. Cause I, yeah. I failed my dodge. Okay, so yeah, you kind of... Okay, one off the, on your sanity. Um, you've gone diff again. <laughs> um, um, and you've started... Um, lucky, you've started kind of... Everything's warped and, and Nevin's face and the guy's face on, on the ground and you look back at Connor, his face as well. They look like demons just like gaping mouths with horns and, and stuff. And they seem to be, um, the, the piping is, is, is really loud and they're all saying, as a thought, as a thought, as a thought. And you're being drawn to the door that Nevin was going to. So the one on the, on the left, you're being drawn to that door. Um, Am I trying to fight it? <laughs> uh, yeah. Give me a power roll. 98. Okay, yeah. So you 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 head straight for that door. Uh, so Nevin, um, he swings at you with the knife. Uh, you missed that. You missed that dodge. Um, so you were going to take a one d four, one. You take one point of damage. All right, that's the first bit of damage I've taken. So. Okay, so now, so what would you like to do, Nevin? So he's just slashed down at you, and and you're seeing. Uh, Lucky has just gotten up um, and he's starting to kind of walk towards the door that you got the bad feeling from and, and you look out to the door and you can see Connor there and he's got a, he's got a, um, a big gash in the side of his face and he's very clearly dead. I feel gonna, a bit like Jack Nicholson right now. I'm going to try to uh, put my foot down on the guy's wrist and take the yep. knife away from him. Okay, give me a strength roll. Oh. I got 18 out of 50. So that's uh, better than half. So, yeah, you managed to get the, the knife. Uh, you, you managed to kind of struggle with him. You're on the ground and he's, he's clawing at you and, and kind of trying to bite at you as you're trying to get the, this knife out of his hand. Um, which I'll, I'll leave it at that for just a second. So, Lucky, you, you've, you've now gotten to the door and um, 
give me another power roll. Yeah, I'm this feeling is like penalty Jack dice. Nicholson. I'm feeling like yeah. Jack Nicholson out with Shining right now. Yeah, that's uh, one. Uh, penalty dice. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I got 59, which means I failed. Okay. So yeah, you swing that door open. You you even though like there's something in your body just telling you not to. Um, so you you open the door and you see a sprawling cosmos. At the center of is an immense planet-sized bubbling mass of blasphemy that continually rithers to eldritch piping, coming from flutes held in the pulsating hands of ugly, terrifying beings, which cavort around the mass at their center. Those looking upon the scene are consumed with terror and dread as the realization dawns on them that the terrifish piping is calling out the name Azathoth. Um, sanity check. I dropped my axe as well. <laughs> Fuck it. 71. <laughs> 1D100. What? Fuck. One, 1D100. You've, you've looked into the face of Azathoth. Yeah, I know. I know. Oh, 55. <laughs> Um, go take me. <laughs> I just jump into him. Yeah, so you're you're fully on saying you've just you you um you jump like you kind of just like jump into the world and and the the never you you feel the door open and you feel like whatever's kind of in in that that kind of thing it, it is is a really like it's it's bad news. Like I said, you've got your hand around this guy's wrist. Um, give me, give me a strength, uh, give me a strength check. Okay. Actually, no, I put my, my foot onto his wrist, but. Give me, no, give me a, give me a, a brawl check. Actually, give me a, a fighting check. Okay. Uh, 95. That is not a pass. Okay. So you kind of, you, you managed to get the knife out of his hand. And then you kind of were like, oh, oh damn, I've got to get out of the way. So you tried to scrabble off and he grabbed your foot yeah. and he just, he, uh, he, he bit down on, on your, on your foot. So give me a dodge roll. Motherfucker. My intention is just to get the fuck out of here. If I can get away, I got a 13. Okay. So yeah, you, you dodge him easily and you actually, you kind of do it, but you kind mm -hmm. of spin around and you, you kick him in the face and he kind of falls back and stumbles back and He's kind of goes. To, he, he's in front of the door, and he's teetering on the edge of the door, like he's about to fall into into that the the, mm. the cosmos. He's right on the edge of it. Um, so, what would you like to do? Do you want to run or? I want to run. I want to go back the way I came if I can figure that out. I uh, think so. Yeah, you have the temporary insanity, so you you kind of uh, come to a little bit, and and um, you you um, as you kind of get up to to run you um, are kind of throwing stuff out of your way just to kind of get your best to the door. And as you throw out of the way, um, give me a luck roll. Okay. I got a nine, no, a 16. Awesome. So you, as you're throwing stuff back, you grab a lamp just to get out of the way and you biff it and it swings back and it clocks Jack right in the noggin. And he falls back into the cosmos, and he falls back into this immense of space, and the door just slams shut, and your the everything just like I said, the stomach drop, everything drops, and it's a big slam. You hit the ground, and everything just sort of like dust is is falling, and the sounds and everything is gone out of you know. All of a sudden, you, you sit back up, and everything's quiet, and and still everything's destroyed. But you, you walk back out in the hallway and, and the stairs are just a stairway. Is Connor's Connor, there, dead on the Connor's there Connor's, dead? Yep, he's dead I'm on gonna, the ground. I'm going to check him to make sure that he's dead. Yeah, he he's 100% dead, yeah. <laughs> his, his, gonna, his skull's about chopped in half. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take his uh, identification mm -hmm. wallet. Uh, if he's got a firearm, well, he's got the shotgun, right? He's got the shotgun, yeah. I'll, uh, somewhere. I'll grab the shotgun, see if he's got any, any, oh, he doesn't have it on him. Sorry. You know, it's, it's down. If you like oh. look down the stairs, it's on the landing of, of one of the landings. All right. Well, I'm just going to, so now the house is kind of back to normal. Yeah. Everything seems All back right. to normal. I'm, I'm going to grab his, well, I'm going to, like I said, I grabbed his ID and I'm going to 
run for the fucking door to get oh, out. Yep. You, you get out, the, the door's busted open just like you left it. Um, you kind of look through the, the doorway in, into the room and you can see the, the dead lady on, on the ground. Like if, everything's normal. You, you run out into the, into the night and just the, the cold gust of air, just kind of everything hits you at once and you just, you sort of drop to your knees and just start just bawling. Yeah. Like just, just the stress of everything and, and just, it's just pure chaos. And then you just hear, Nevin, you okay? And you look up and, and, uh, and Liam's there holding the, the, the guy in white who's just sort of looking at you um, and, and things like that. Um, and he's just sort of standing and he's struggling against Liam. So I, I cry a little, I cry a little more. And then I just start cackling because <laughs> I'm got to go see the psychologist. Cool. So, and that is the, that is the end, end of our scenario guys. Congratulations. Oh, geez. Well, just, just to let everybody know, uh, the message that I received was I was supposed to assassinate, uh, uh Connor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Awkwardly. <laughs> Connor we, also got that message. <laughs> oh, did he? <laughs> yes, yeah. I got the message by mistake. Oh, well, fuck. To give credit to oh. Raymond, he, he did not, you know, he didn't let it uh, uh, in, uh, impact his role-playing. He he played uh, played against that very well, so congrats, Ray, Raymond. Thank Sorry you. about that. I was If you'd have, if we'd have all survived, I would have cut your throat, but... I'd have said no yeah, hard that thing, but That's all right. I was, I was planning on whacking you and... Uh, what's his name anyway? The hammer. Holy smoke. Oh, Why yeah. Good luck getting anywhere near the hammer. Fucking <laughs> know. Hey, at least Liam's alive. That was a great, great show. That was good. Sorry, it went a bit, uh, bit longer than I expected. I just sort of was like having a bit of fun, and then I went, oh, it's getting pretty late there. I should probably let the guys. <laughs> yeah. That was good. That was good. Good. So, so give us a little bit of explanation what the hell was going on. Before we so um, Jacob Smith was a uh, cultist, obviously, uh, who worshipped Azathoth. Mm -hmm. And his goal was to bring Azathoth into the world and, and put ruin across the, the planet. The items that he had Jack steal were things for a ritual to open a portal to Azathoth and to, to, that, to that world. Um, so you had the, the scroll, which was the ritual itself, the dagger, which was part of the ritual. And then the translation was the translation of that scroll. So it, it in English, um, which you actually had the non-translate, you, the copy, the sheet you had that writing down the bottom was the ritual as well. Uh. Um, so Jack kind of being like, Oh, this was like, this guy paid like a lot of money and it was a big deal. Um, thought, Oh, well I'll give it a go. So he accidentally, opened the portal to Azathoth's world in his apartment building, which morphed the entire apartment building's architecture and just morphed the entire, which is why when you guys hit the stairs, everything went to shit. Into um, insanity, and, yeah. And, and everyone who was in the apartment was killing themselves and, and going insane. The old woman downstairs killed her husband and, and they were all becoming, you know, members of the thing of Azathoth. So, um, Smith hadn't heard from Lucky Jack either, uh, from Sticky Jack, so had sent followers to go and check on him, which was when Lucky and Max got sent to go and find Jack um, at that point. Um, so, yeah, that, that was the main basis of, of what happened there and, and why Jack hadn't been seen for weeks. So he'd basically been sitting in his room trying to kill himself for about a week um, without avail because the ritual is keeping him alive. Wow. Once you removed the dagger um, from him, he kind of lost that. Uh, he lost part of the ritual because he wasn't holding the dagger and things like that. So you were able to maneuver him and, and, and kick him through the, to the court of Azathoth where we're lucky. Um, went in. You almost opened that door. Never. <laughs> Almost. Yeah. Our players, our players included Josh Harwood, uh, Raymond Offord, uh, Darren and Abel missed the last episode, uh, and uh, with myself and Zane Fleming as the keeper of this. 
We're currently producing up to four shows a week with music and sound effects added in post-production. In order to create a richer listener experience, we provide audio-only versions of our shows for you for you to download from Podbean or iTunes. If you'd like to become a patron, visit our Patreon account just a dollar through a month. Helps us a lot. There's a link in the description below. Like, share, and subscribe to our channel and punch that bell icon for updates on our latest shows and leave us some comments. We like answering them and a- we like reading them and answering any questions you might have. I'm still suffering sanity loss. <laughs> <laughs> this is Tom Rayleigh together with all the members of our gaming club inviting you to journey with us once again into the darkness for another adventure into the universe of HP Lovecraft and the Call of Cthulhu role-playing game. Until next time, good luck, good gaming. Thank you.